You're in the driver's seat. We can just go through some of these interview questions and we'll okay. just see what happens. Maybe we'll throw some humor in there. I yeah. know you want to throw some humor in, so we'll try to, you know, we'll keep Where it light can. and uh, just talk. It'll be good. All right. What do you say to people who just say all you need is just inner healing or you need to just renew your mind and they don't do any rebuking ever of any spirit? Yeah, I think so. The whole, well, I gotta be careful who I call out here. There's a large movement of inner healing and anti-deliverance, but the question is how did Jesus do it? And I, I kind of debated someone on this recently because they were like, well, you don't always have to cast out the devil. If there's a demon there, there's other ways to get it out. But if you look at the Bible, biblically, the way Jesus cast the demons out or got rid of demons was he drove them out. So there's no alternative. Uh, medicine's not an alternative. Therapy's not an alternative. Counseling's yeah. not an alternative. And for, for a long time, the church has substituted other things for deliverance. So you go yeah. to like the restaurant and you, you went for your favorite meal and you go, hey, I want this. And they say, oh, we don't have that, but we'll substitute it for something else. Yeah. And it's like, no, I came all the way here for this. Yeah. And if I can't get this here, where am I gonna get it? And yeah. a lot of churches, it's like, man, if you can't get delivered at your church, if you can't get free at your church, where are these people going to go? And my heart is honestly broken at the amount of demonized people sitting in our churches yeah. and pastors and leaders that are not willing to confront darkness. But in John 10, the Bible says the hireling actually runs from the wolf. So like yeah. a sign that a pastor is a hireling is he runs from the battle instead yeah. of running towards the battle. So yeah. I think that I don't think there's a substitute for getting a demon out. I think there's a place for renewing the mind. I think there's a place for obviously repentance. I think there's a place where God can inner heal you and wounds and scars and soul, all the stuff yeah. we talk about. But I think at the end of the day, if there's a demon there, you can't crucify the demon. Uh, you can't cast out the flesh. So you need yeah. to get delivered. You need to go through deliverance. And the model Jesus gave was not just, I'm gonna fast until the demon leaves me. And that does happen. Or I'm going to preach until the demon or sit under anointed preaching until the demon leaves. Jesus told the disciples to go cast demons out of other people. So the biblical model for casting out demons is a believer casting out demons from a person. So outside of that, yes, God can move, but the way to get the demon out is through driving it out, is through deliverance. And we do that, of course, with our words. We do that with spiritual warfare. But I, but I, am, I am worried that the devil has substituted in the church deliverance for inner healing or for renewing of the mind or for sanctification. People say, oh, they don't need to get delivered. They just need to be sanctified. So it's going, okay, so if I get sanctified more, that voice telling me to take my life will disappear. If I get sanctified more, that anger and that <laughs> bitterness will go. Right away. Yeah, it's just gonna, if you just, or or I'm gonna get in trouble here. It's okay. They, they say, oh, you just need to soak. You just need to soak in the presence of God. For six hours. Yeah, yeah, soak. And, and the demon will float. Yeah, and it's like, where was Jesus soaking? It's like, we're like this meat being marinated yeah. in like a bag. It's like, no, we don't just soak. Yeah. We don't just marinate. This is actually a contact ministry. Yeah. This is a violent ministry. Paul says we're in a wrestling match. And so I think it's necessary that we drive them out in Jesus' yeah. name, the way the disciples did. So yeah, I, I'll, I get in, in trouble for saying that because people are like, well, you could also go to therapy, but it's like, ah, did Jesus counsel demons out? I see him driving them out. Yeah. And I guess this is a little controversial, but it's the same with worship. It's like, People prophesy over worship leaders that as you sing, you know, yeah. everyone's oh. everyone's going to be delivered in the audience, and it's like, I wish, I wish, yeah. because that would save us about six thousand man hours. Yeah, yeah. What are they just going to float away because you hit a good chord? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think there's a lot of like we in the church we always give these other ways of people being delivered that are easier. Like we pick yeah. the easy road. Can we have the easy one? Yes, yeah, so we're like we don't want to <laughs> wrestle, we don't want to spend hours, and anyone that does true deliverance. And guys, we have to stop saying this. Pastors, leaders watching, you have to stop saying deliverance should only take five minutes. That's deliverance right. should only take three. It's like, who are you to say how long it's gonna take a demon to come out? And I often tell people, if you've been opening the door for 40 years to demonic spirits, why is it you think in five minutes yeah, they're gonna instantly though. leave you? And it has to do with our generations, a, a drive-through Instagram, <laughs> fast food, DoorDash generation that wants everything quick and now, when biblically it's like not every demon is just gonna come out in five minutes or five seconds. Uh, some of these demons are extremely stubborn and especially when you have a lot of believers that are doing deliverance, don't know their authority or they're not trained in deliverance or they've never done it. So I think it's a massive disservice to say when I do deliverance, it's five minutes. And every pastor that tells me that, I'm like, show me a video. Yeah, like I want to see, and I've never seen a video yet. It's like, 
Oftentimes yep. they'll get them to manifest, but the demon yep. doesn't actually come out. Yeah, and they just think it's come out. Or, or one demon comes out and there's 32 others they're not aware of. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. So we really believe in like full deliverance, making sure Deep. you go through one on one. And mm. if we do mass deliverance, I tell people, hey, this doesn't mean you're yeah. fully delivered. You may need to go through a one on one session. Yeah. And we're, we're really trying to train people that it's not a yeah. quick drive by, tap you on the head, fall over yeah. type of thing. And we'd like to do a mass deliverance at the end of the teaching. Yeah. Or, or in the middle, whenever it yeah, kind of, yeah. whenever, we whenever can pray it kind the of end fits. for mass deliverance for sure. So that's everyone who's still on here. We're going to pray for a mass deliverance and i've got isaiah to agree to do something crazy that he's never done on his show well you're before. gonna do it but i'm gonna pray with you i'm gonna do it because he doesn't know it's gonna work yeah yeah so can It'll i tell good. him what we're gonna do yeah we could do it. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take authority over every single evil and unclean spirit through the internet and through the airways on on every platform and command them to give up the exact number of how many are in each person and then in the comments, you're just going to write the number that pops into your head, but you don't want to make it up. You don't want to give your ima an imagination. You want to give a real number. You, it should pop into your head. And so then I'm going to um, command them to submit and release the exact names of the demons that you need to be delivered from. And then we'll together take turns saving yeah. our voices, just rebuke yeah. every demon and they'll be stubborn. Some will come out straight away. And some people might need to pull over because you're going to be driving the car and it's just going to go... <laughs> Deliverance drive-by. You're going to start growling at the traffic lights and the police are going to pull you over because you're like making a scene. So the next question is, does the person being delivered have to want the demons to leave in order for them to leave? So this is a controversial question because I know people say, well, I've done deliverance and the person didn't want it. In my mind, the devil and God both recognize free will. So if a person doesn't want to be delivered, I've wrestled for three hours, four hours, five hours, and the demon's like, she doesn't want me to leave or he doesn't want me to leave. And then we call the person back, you know, the, tell the demon, stop talking, call the person back by name. And the person's like, oh, I've been this way for so long. I don't know how I'll be without it. So if you're living your life, you're used to being anxious and you're used to being stressed out. You're used to being yeah. living in this, whether like one girl was a spirit <laughs> of perfection. People have a hard time oh, when those demons, because they're demons are personalities. Like they're literally personalities in Matthew 12 that live inside of us. So when people lose a demon, they're actually losing a personality. So you say, oh, I have multiple personalities. All you're saying <laughs> is you have multiple demons. That's yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times people, and it's so weird and people watching this are gonna be like, that doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense. It yeah. doesn't make sense how a lady could be abused by a guy for a year, two years, three years, physically, sexually, and verbally, and then they break up for a month, and then she goes back to him. And then she's abused for yeah. two more years, and oh. then they break up for six months. And I think it's called back. Stockholm Syndrome, yeah, it is. Yeah. where you yeah. fall in love with the person abusing you and your captor, and demons, in a yeah. weird, sick, disgusting, demonic, unclean, twisted that. way, cause people to fall in love with them. They actually convince people, and some people are manifesting right now as I say this, <laughs> but they convince people that you want me. You actually Ooh. like being this way. You like being dysfunctional. Yeah. You like, you don't, you, they'll say this to you. You don't even know what it's like to not throw up after you eat. You don't even know what it's like to not cut yourself in the shower. Yeah. You don't even know what it's like to not be suicidal. You don't even know what it's like to not be religious. And if, if I leave you, you're going to lose a part of you. And so people do get this yeah. really weird connection with unclean spirits unknowingly. So when you're in there dealing with the demons, the person oftentimes doesn't even realize they're actually, mm -hmm. they actually like the demon. This sounds right. so weird. And you know this because you've like done deliverance. Boyfriend. We've had it's, a, it's like, like an it's, abusive boyfriend. We've had, we've had Leviathan say, I'm here to protect them. I protect them. Yes. Yep. And some demons too, I want to add into this, will actually say they're good. They're like, mm -hmm. I'm not bad. Yeah. I, I, I want the best. I help mm -hmm. them succeed. And you know, you have these celebrities and people that have demonic power. So whether it's being good at instruments, I met someone that was extremely good at every instrument because they asked a demon to come in them and help them do instruments. And the demon did come in them and they were good at every instrument. Whoa. So they were like, I don't want to be delivered because I'm going to lose my musical ability. So the demon convinced them, you need me. And so these are, these are real things. There's demons that will come and cause someone to not age. There's celebrities that literally 50, 60 look like they're 30 Whoa. and they've made contracts with the devil. I had one girl Whoa. One of the craziest deliverance literally told me that she made a contract with, with a demon and the demon came through a poster of Tupac in her bedroom. The poster started talking to her and saying, I want you to join the Illuminati. And whether this was real or not, this was her story. Mm -hmm. And the demon told her, you know, I'll give you beauty. I'll give you talent. You'll never age. And this girl was, I don't know, mid twenties. It looked like she was like 18 still. But my, my point is these demons do come. They trick they deceive they promise power they promise authority they promise favor they promise blessing but we know the devil will use you up and throw you in a ditch when he's done with you he yeah. comes to still kill and destroy so in yeah. one way there are some demons that are seemingly like harmless like 
But at the same time, like for example, mm -hmm. there was a girl with the spirit of perfection and she gets straight A's and she has a great job and she's working for a Fortune 500 company. And this spirit told her, like, I'm gonna help you make everything in your life perfect. And yeah. it did, but it was, it was to a fault and it was a demon. She didn't want the demon to leave. She's like, I've been, I've been into perfection with her hair and her makeup, everything, perfection every way. She's like, I've yeah. been this way my whole life. If the demon leaves me, I won't be this way. Is this so. the Hollywood deliverance? No, no, this is somebody else. Um, can you share that story without saying the name of the person? Yeah, so we dealt with somebody that uh, was very, is very high up in Hollywood, knows a lot of famous, and again, some of it's confidential, so I won't name all the names, but knows high-level celebrities, you know, multi-hundred million dollar business that me and my wife went and traveled and did deliverance on, and she was involved in, you know, everything you can think of talking and moving fire and lifting up objects with her hand and all these demonic things. But she was basically telling me like all the stuff you hear in Hollywood. And I can't say some of it for, you know, for yeah. terms of service reasons, but this, the demonic stuff we hear about in Hollywood, she's like, it's yeah. all real. All, all the these evil. people are invoking demons. They're asking the devil for favor. Um, it's all real. And so we did a deliverance on her and now she's involved in a local church and she got radically saved through a YouTube video. She had, listen to this, a hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry, $100,000 worth of jewelry that was all demonic and symbols. Wow. She has a video, which I wish some at some point we can get a hold of. And she showed me and my wife this video of her putting all the jewelry in a trash bag, closed the trash bag, and the trash bag was moving. It was, I, I'm not kidding, we saw this video, she has yeah. this video, so demonic. But again, this is a testimony to demonic objects, accursed items, when you get to this level um, you know, and you start talking to people that say they've dedicated their lives to Satan. Like I've dealt with people that are like, I literally gave my life to Satan. I told Satan, fill my body. I and mean, this is that high level when you get into the occult where you're actually invoking demons into you, you're inviting them in. And similarly to how we would invite the Holy Spirit in, the more open we are and the more empty we are, the more the Holy Spirit comes. People literally empty themselves out and they become so, they become basically a shell for demonic spirits. They have 30 different personalities, 40 personalities. So again, you know, these are when you get to that level where people are willing, fully opening themselves up to demons. Not probably yeah. most people listening to this, but there are some watching that are at that level. Yeah. Now, what would you say to um, a pastor or a leader who's teaching people that it's a sin to talk to a demon and it's a sin to ask it a question because when the demon talks, you're making that person into a medium? Yeah, so I always tell people it's not a conversation, it's an interrogation. If you look at Jesus the way he did deliverance, Jesus talked to demons. So if, if you say it's a sin to talk to a demon, then you're saying when Jesus talked to the demon, I believe it was in Mark 5 or Mark 9, one of those, but when Jesus talked to the man at the tombs, I think it was Mark 5, Jesus was sinning because Jesus, the Bible says, was commanding the demon out. So Derek Prince says in the Greek it was, come out, come out, come out. That's what the Greek text was. Mm -hmm. But the demon didn't come out. So the demon doesn't listen to Jesus, and then Jesus says, what is your name? So a couple helpful reasons why we would talk to demons. Now, if you're talking to a demon and you're trying to get unnecessary information out, you've talked too long. If you're yeah. talking to a demon and you're, you're intrigued by it, you're enthralled and you start going off topic, you're talking too long. So for me, if I'm gonna talk to a demonic spirit, I'm on topic, it's only for the purpose of getting the demon out. So I'm not sitting there going, hey, are you, you know, what are you doing in the neighborhood? And you, where do you live? I'm not asking all these unnecessary questions about the person's family or what happened. I'm just asking, why are you there? What is your name? What is your legal right? Why won't you leave? When did you enter? So a couple helpful things would be the demons that's talking will reveal other demons hiding. And if you guys know anything about deliverance, demons are cowards. They will in an instant tell on the other demons living in the person. So <laughs> oftentimes we'll say, you know, who's the chief demon? Who's the prince demon in that kingdom, in that person? Because demons run in gangs, they run in kingdoms and people. And so it might reveal there's, an, there's a demon of suicide. You know, I'm, I might be talking to the spirit of lust and it might be saying, well, there's also a demon of suicide here. And if I leave, it has to leave too. Like they get, they start turning on each other. When the fire gets turned on, all of them just, the cockroaches start running. When the lights turn on, you've heard it, cockroaches run. So they could also reveal how many demons are there. So you might say how many are there, and it might say 11, 12, 20, 30. Um, it might say there's a curse that needs to be broken. It might say why it won't leave. I've come to find that when you're doing deliverance, the demons biblically are being tormented. So they don't want to be there anymore. When you're getting de doing deliverance, they want to leave. So oftentimes they will actually tell them themselves, they'll maybe tell you, objects they're attached to like we did deliverance on one girl and the demon said i'm attached to an object at her house it was a plate that came from africa so we did deliverance on her and when she got home she texts us and said that plate that was on my shelf 
while we were doing deliverance, fell off and shattered on the floor. So we were casting a demon out of her. The demon said, I'm attached to this plate. I don't know. I, and this is all, a lot of it is a mystery to me. And when the demon came out, she went home. The plate was off the shelf, broken on the ground. So these things are spiritual. These things are mysteries. Um, they might tell you I'm attached to an object. They might tell you how long they've been there. They might give you their name, which helps with the function or their identity, right? So if it's a spirit of confusion, Okay, well, I know you're going to try to confuse me. If it's a spirit of anger, mm -hmm. you're probably going to get violent. And, and the, there's 100,000 you know, other demons and names that we can go into. But I think what's important that I want to note, even in this interview, is deliverance is a great mystery. So for me to sit here and say, I'm a professional, I know everything, I mm -hmm. don't. We're working in the spiritual realm, which can't be seen with the natural senses. So the fact that a demon can live inside of a body part like I've had demons say, I'm in their vocal cord. I'm in their right toe. It's like, what? And I want to laugh and be like, you're in their right toe. You know, but at the same time, it's a great mystery how a demon could embed itself into an actual body part. So these are not things that any of us know at all. Any, the, the hardest people to teach deliverance are people that say, I know. I know. When you try to tell them something, they go, I know, because none of us know everything. We're working in the spiritual realm. And so I think it's okay to talk to demons. Jesus did it. And if he did it, I think it's okay for us to, as long as we keep, keep some rules there. Now, did demons tell the truth or do they lie in the Bible? A, the Bible, and B, how do we know if they're telling the truth or lying to us about how many and what are their names and things like that? Yeah, so interestingly enough, when I started researching this of demons lying, because everyone says, we don't cast out devils, they just lie. We don't, we don't deal with demons. We don't, for sure, we don't talk to them. And a lot of people that never do deliverance say that. And it's always like the advice comes from the stands. And I'm like, dude, get on the field before you try to give me advice on how to cast out devils when you've never done it. But a lot of them will say that unknowingly. If you go through the Bible, there's actually not one place in the entire Bible where a demon lied, which is crazy. Now, demons do lie. Let's be honest. They lie when they talk to us. But in the Bible, every time a demon spoke in terms of deliverance, they actually told the truth. They were like, you're the, in fact, they told the truth. This will preach. I'm going to try not to preach here, but they told the truth so much, Jesus had to tell them to be quiet. And then pastors say, oh, tell the demon to be quiet like Jesus in Mark 1. And the reason in Mark 1 why Jesus told the demon to be quiet was because it knew who he was before the religious people did. Like it knew more about his deity than the religious people. And Jesus was like, be quiet because I don't want my identity to, to be revealed by a demon. I want it to be revealed by not just my father, but by their own revelation. So in Mark 1, Jesus did tell a demon to be quiet because it was revealing who he was. But no, there's nowhere in the scripture where a demon lies. Now, when I'm doing deliverance, I don't take much uh, truth from them. I just say, you must be honest, honest in Jesus' name. And then we have the Holy Spirit who, if you don't know, I'm going to say something life-changing, knows everything. Like, he know, yeah, literally knows everything. So I will ask the Holy Spirit, was that a lie? And the Holy Spirit will tell me yes or no. It's, it's simple. And the, and the Holy Spirit has told me before he's lying, but I will tell you, oftentimes demons, I know people get mad at this. In the Bible, if you just go through the seven deliverances, specific um, ones Jesus did, they didn't ever lie to Jesus. Even when he said, what's your name? It said Legion. Jesus didn't say, you're a lying spirit. Jesus cast the mm -hmm. demon out. It was legion. So yeah, I just tell them, be honest in Jesus' name. And then I ask the Holy Spirit, whatever they're telling me, I'm filtering it through the Holy Spirit. And when we're doing deliverance, we're hand in hand with the Holy Ghost. Like we're working with the Holy Spirit. He's our coworker. And when the Jesus sent them in the Great Commission, he's our coworker. So we're working with him and it's, it's usually good. I, I don't usually have a time where I'm like, you're lying and fighting yeah. it. One time, let me share one story. One time I was casting out a demon and the demon wasn't listening. And so I didn't know what to do. So I started praying over, you know, finances and praying over, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, preach. So I started preaching to the person getting delivered. I was like, you know, Jesus died on the cross. And I've shared this before. He was on that hill of Golgotha, blah, blah, blah. I'm sharing the whole story of Jesus. And the demon said, don't tell me about Jesus. I was there when they crucified him. And I responded with, you're a lying spirit. And the Holy yeah. Spirit said, no, he was there when they crucified me. So I realized that these demons, they're, they're, they haven't been here for only five years or 10 years. And our little Starbucks caramel macchiato churches are not going to be able to overcome them if we're just lukewarm. These demons have seen men of God fall, emperors fall, kings, queens. They've been here for thousands of years and they're far more educated, far smarter than we are. But the one thing we do have is we have the name of Jesus over them. So yeah, interesting because I thought the demon was lying and the Holy Spirit's like, actually he was there when they crucified me, which is pretty crazy. Wild. So how can a Christian who has the Holy Spirit also have a demon? Yeah, so this is a major question that we can probably go along on. We won't take a lot of time on it, but I tell people all the time, a Christian could have whatever they want. Like they say, a Christian can't have a demon. And I'm like, uh, what else can they not have? Are they not allowed to have a donut? Are they not allowed to have a coffee? Like a Christian can no, have whatever they want. When you get saved, you don't all of a sudden get a license to live however you want and be protected. In fact, God never protects people in disobedience. So if you open a door, like if I open my front door right now, I don't get to say, 
if a fly flies in, you're not allowed to fly in here because the door is open. A fly can come in, a wasp can come in, a rat can come in. If you leave the door open, stuff can come in, whether you're a Christian or not. So a couple things we have to ask ourselves. Number one, is there any scripture that says a Christian can't have a demon? Because at the end of the day, my stories or my experiences don't matter. What matters is what does the scripture say? So is there a place in scripture where the Bible says you can't, a Christian can't have a demon? And the answer is no. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says a Christian can't have a demon. In fact, the Bible would point to and allude to the fact that deliverance is actually for Christians, actually for the believer. And then, and then let me also bring up another point. Deliverance would be pointless if Christians can't have demons. And the reason why I say that is, is if a Christian can't have a demon, all we need to do is get the person saved and automatically all the demons will leave making deliverance unnecessary. But the truth is in Acts chapter eight, Philip preached to them, he did miracles and he cast out demons. And it's like, Philip, why don't you just preach to them? Why are you even casting out demons? Just get them saved. But the, but the question, what, the answer is, yes, absolutely believers can come under the power of a demon. If you look at the Greek word for what we translate possessed, and this is a very well-known teaching by many people, uh, the, the word possessed was not in the Greek. So they translated the Greek word to the English word called possess, possess which means having ownership. But there's no Greek word for possessed. It just means to be under the power of a demon. So the oppression argument, the depress, uh, oppression versus possession, mm -hmm. I don't get into none of that. Mm -hmm. I just say they're demonized. And absolutely, if you look at Mark 139, mm -hmm. Jesus went from synagogue to synagogue casting out demons. Mm -hmm. If you look at Acts chapter eight, the disciples were mm -hmm. full of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter five, Ananias and Sapphira were filled with Satan. So in Acts four, they're full of the, the Holy Spirit. In Acts five, they're full of Satan. Yeah. And then the person might argue watching this saying, well, Ananias and Sapphira weren't Christian. And I'm gonna give you two clear ways we know they were Christian. Number one, what unbeliever do you know sold everything they have and gave half to the church? That's <laughs> Dude, number one. The, the, believe, the believers don't even do that. That's number one. Okay, so, and then number two, this is the best argument for those that say Ananias and Sapphira weren't Christians. Number two is, when does God ever kill unbelievers in the New Testament? Never. So God doesn't kill unbelievers for lying to him because uh, half the city Absolutely. would be dead. <laughs> well, unbelievers lie to, Jesus, to God and the Holy Spirit every day and lie all the time. But yet God yeah. says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill these people because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So God's not out here killing unbelievers for lying. Obviously, yeah. they were Christians. Matthew 12 Jesus says the demons come back seven times yeah. worse. So again, if this is for unbelievers, the demons yeah. would just come right back. And we can go on and on and on. And the church was, back then, the church was only for believers. They didn't try and evangelize lost people within the church. Yeah. It, it was out on the streets, and they brought you into church when you were a believer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think from your experience, from my experience, I only do deliverance on believers. And I've done deliverance, as you have, on pastors, on leaders, on all these Christian people. These are not like people that are like talking to themselves on the side of the road. These are mm -hmm. average, normal police officers, school teachers, people that work at Walmart, Starbucks, McDonald's, normal people that are coming for deliverance. And so absolutely, even if you look at Galatians, Paul said, who cast an evil spell on you? It's like, wait, Paul, you didn't get the memo? Christians yeah. can't have spells put on them. Christians mm -hmm. can't have demons. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, we see... Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 4. They had a different gospel, a different Jesus, and a different spirit. And then last mm -hmm. one, last verse I want to give for this is 2 Timothy 1, 17. Two Christians, he says, God has not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So you guys have fear. Yeah. You guys are timid. That spirit didn't come from God. So you're a Christian with the spirit of fear, and it didn't come from God. Mm -hmm. So you, so is, is fear not a spirit? It is. Yeah. It is a spirit, and Christians have it. So yes, absolutely, a Christian mm -hmm. could have a demon. Well, how could the Holy Spirit and a demon live together, they don't. The Holy Spirit lives in your spirit, you become alive in Christ, and your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotion, Second Thessalonians talks about this, this is the place where demons live. The Bible also says nothing good lives in your flesh. So God does not live in the flesh. No. Uh, demons are able to also live in the flesh. So yeah, those are a couple ways. Yes, the Christians can have demons. No, yeah. a Christian can't be possessed. None of us teach that. None yeah. of us believe that. Christians cannot be owned by the devil, but they can be under the power of the devil. Yeah, and you kind of touched on this as well, is people love to put it put, be, be in like two categories. Like what's the difference between possessed and oppressed? Yeah. And then they have this whole teaching that, Christians can't be possessed, they can only be oppressed. And they ask me these questions, they say, look, um, what are the two categories? And I'm like, there's not two categories, there's thousands of categories. Yes. You can have one demon, you can have 10 demons, you can have a hundred, you can have That's a thousand. Good. So why are you trying to uh, put it into two categories? It's like, it's like, and not only could you have a thousand, what are the types of demons that you have? Are they highly ranking ones or are they just mild ones? Like, you know, they're all different levels of evil. When he said seven can come back, he said seven more evil than each other, as in seven levels of evil, mm. as in anger, rage, murder, you know, all the levels of yeah. evil. 
So it's like, there's not two categories. Yeah. You know, it's too simple. It's over simple. One of the saddest things happening right now in the church is pastors telling their congregation a Christian can't have a demon. Because let me show you what happens when you do this. A person in the church has a demon. Because the pastor telling you you can't have a demon doesn't change the fact you have one. So you still have it. <laughs> you still have it. You come to your pastor. Think about this. You come to your pastor and you say, I have a demon. I'm, say, for example, spirit of suicide. I have thoughts of killing myself. And instead of the pastor saying, let's cast this out of you, the pastor says, well, maybe you're not a Christian. Like they put your salvation in question because their theology says a Christian can't have a demon. So if you have a demon, you must not be a Christian. So instead of pointing our finger at the demon and saying, come out of this person, we point our finger at the person and say, well, maybe you're just not saved. And that is so sad that the person's salvation comes under question instead of the unclean spirit. And that is the <laughs> epidemic. The That's the epidemic in the church is we have pastors their theology is keeping people in bondage. And I'll go even farther and say people are dying, physically dying, because pastors aren't willing to proclaim there is freedom and deliverance for you. This is why Jesus came first, John. Jesus in yeah. Mark 1 cast out devils. Like you literally, and I've studied the Bible plenty, you can't even get through like two or three chapters of the Gospels without Jesus casting out demons. And I've always said like Mark 139 says he went from synagogue to synagogue casting out demons. <laughs> and one day God told me, there's a thousand testimonies in that one verse. Like it literally says he went from synagogue to synagogue casting out demons. How many demons? How many people? There's a thousand testimonies in that one verse. And so if we're not careful, we might think, oh, this is just secondary ministry. This yeah. is a side ministry. This is not. This is mm -hmm. the ministry of Jesus to cast out devils, yep. to threaten Satan's kingdom. So every pastor watching, stop being soft. Stop being soft. Get off the cruise ship. Get on the battleship. Stop being a jellyfish. Get some backbone. John 10, don't be a hireling. Don't be in this for money. Cast out demons. Your people need this and they're longing for this. Again, I, I know I'm not supposed to be preaching here, but I get too fired up and excited. <laughs> we definitely need deliverance badly in the church. Yeah, and uh, people backslide if they don't have their demons cast out. Yep. If they've got spirits of addiction, it's like a hook and a fishing line and the devil's just pulling you straight back into yep. your old habits. So... If somebody backslides, and I mean really backslides, like they go back into drugs, they sleep around with multiple people, they're swearing and cussing and using God's name in vain, and then a year or two later they go, oh, I'm going to come back to church again, are they going to need to be delivered again? I would say yes. <laughs> in fact, I would say every single person watching this should go through deliverance. Like, why not? I was thinking of this why today. Not? If you line up nine random people, or let's say ten random people, in my opinion, from my experience, I could be wrong. This is my own opinion. This is not in the word of God. This is Isaiah's translation here, okay? I would say 10 people lined up, nine of them need deliverance. Yeah. Honestly, if you just w look at society where we're at, yeah. you just, and, and, and pastors would say no, and the pastors that would say probably not are, are really out of touch with what people are going through. Yeah. Pastors say, well, I don't ever deal with demons. Well, because no one goes to you because they know you don't cast out devils. <laughs> They're not gonna, like, you're not going to help. Yeah, I've never taken my car to the dentist to get an oil change because the <laughs> dentist doesn't change oil. So yeah. I'm only going to take my car to the car shop. And a lot of pastors are like, well, people don't come to me for deliverance. I'm like, yeah, because you just spend all your days golfing. Like they come to you for golfing lessons, but not deliverance. So we desperately need people that would willingly say, I'm going to do deliverance. And if you backslid or you've gone back to the world, just get delivered. Just get free. Go for deliverance. Yeah. The absolute worst thing that can happen to you if you go for deliverance is you just don't have a demon. Like that's the worst. Yeah. The best thing that can happen is you get delivered. But at the end of the day, deliverance is just prayer. So like, should I go for prayer? Yeah. Absolutely. And if you did backslide, it's likely there's critters on board because oftentimes demons will wait for somebody to do something stupid, specifically a Christian that yeah. they hate. And the demons hate you way more when you've served God and you backslide. So they're just waiting to jump in. So yeah, repeat deliverances are, are a real thing for whatever reason. And I definitely, and you and me are both voices for deliverance. One thing I want to say as a voice of deliverance is we have to stop shaming people for repeat deliverance. Like our critics say, oh, I saw that girl in a video getting delivered before. So? Who cares? Go for more deliverance. I tell people, go get more deliverance, get more freedom. I When I pray mass deliverance, I put my hands up and go, Lord, deliver me. Like, <laughs> if there's anything there. Dude, if there's anything there, search me. If there's any critters on board, I want them off of me. I'm not prideful yeah. and arrogant and then 
you know, the heresy hunters make videos. Isaiah Saldivar says he needs deliverance. Yes, all the time, Lord, deliver me. Jesus said the daily bread was deliver us from evil. That was the daily prayer. So one of Jesus's prayers was deliver us from evil daily. That was a daily prayer. So yes, we need deliverance. If somebody backslides, repeat deliverance is amazing. Maybe you got deliverance once, but not everything came out. Maybe you went back to the world. Maybe you only did a 20 minute deliverance. Uh, there's many reasons why you would need a repeat deliverance, but I'm, I'm all for getting delivered. I'm never going to say like, oh no, don't, don't do that. Blah, blah, blah. How often would you recommend to go in for a session? I mean, I change my oil on my car every 3,000 miles, so it's no problem getting the oil change every few months. I would, I would go through deliverance every couple months, every six months. It depends on how free you want to be. I mean, <laughs> if you're okay with, if you're, now listen, if you're not having any symptoms, right? There's no, no overwhelming desires, no perverted thoughts being created, no nightmares, no, and you're not having no symptoms, then hey, there's plenty of people we need to work on. Don't hit me up, right? Like, you don't need to keep coming and coming, coming, but if there's symptoms and there's signs and there's things that are dragging you away, there's voices there, there's overwhelming desires, perverted thoughts, then go for deliverance. But again, I don't want to create people that are deliverance junkies yeah. that are addicted to deliverance. Like we're not addicted to deliverance. We're addicted to the one that does the deliverances. And the more we go next to him, the more he reveals the impurities and the more we get free. So I would recommend every few months. And here's the thing. Once you learn how to do deliverance, once your husband or wife knows, your wife could deliver you. You don't need Isaiah Saldivar. You don't need pa Apostle Pagani. You don't need Mike <clears throat> Signorelli. Your wife could deliver you. So don't be afraid to deliver your kids. Like if you're out here in the chat and you watch these videos, you get trained, you should be able to do deliverance on your kid. It's like, it's not that bad. It's not that hard. So I would recommend, man, make sure that your wife, your spouse, your kids, train them up, train them up. So in case you need deliverance in the middle of the night, you don't have to go on the deliverance map. You can get delivered right there. Amen. I know my answers are long, by the way. I'm a preacher, so yeah, sorry. Well, you have we, to edit out we, all we the knew that. We knew that. Yeah, you have so plenty of content okay. for you guys. So um, if if someone gets delivered, do their children automatically get delivered from generational curses, or do they still have to go through and deliver their three or four kids as well? So that's a really good question. There's a lot of controversy to this. It's, it's a mystery to me, right? So I don't know fully. I'm trying to understand the whole generational thing because it seems to be some generational lines get skipped. Some kids don't have certain things. Generational curses and generational spirits, ancestral spirits, we'd call them, are very, um, uh, how do I say it's complex. So it's weird because I'll look at a family of three and one of the kids will have the spirit of anger that the dad had and one of the kids will have the spirit of suicide that the mom had and the third kid has nothing. He's like an angel. You're like, this kid, how did this kid come out of the same womb? So it seems to be spirits don't always get passed down 100%, but... If you do go through deliverance, I would recommend bringing your kids through deliverance. I, I personally haven't seen where a, a parent gets delivered. And again, this is my only experience, I, just my experience. I could be wrong on this. This could be somebody else's a better answer. But I have not seen where a parent gets delivered and then all of a sudden, randomly, all the kids get delivered at the same time. What I've come to see is once the parents gets delivered, it breaks the power of those demons and their kids. But the demon oftentimes still needs to be told when to leave. For example, I was doing deliverance on this kid and the demon wasn't leaving. And we were praying and praying and praying. And the demon finally left. There was another demon that was stubborn. And we ended up talking to this demon and we're like, why haven't you left? And the demon just said, well, no one's told me to. Like it was just waiting for someone to tell it to. Yeah. You've probably heard this before where a demon manifests and goes, just yeah. tell me to leave and I'll go. Cause it's like, it has to be, it's assignment has to be broken. <laughs> and in some weird way, I've had demons tell me I'll get in trouble if I leave them. Like there's a hierarchy, right? So there's like, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. There's, there's a hierarchy. And these low-ranking demons that live in people mostly um, actually get in trouble in a weird way when they, when, they break, when they don't fulfill their assignment. So I think some demons are ready to go. And I always tell people this, make yourself an un uncomfortable house for demons. Like if you have the Wi-Fi turned on, if you have nice carpets, if you have food in the, in the fridge, the demons are gonna wanna be there. But if you start fasting and praying, get the, and I'm using symbolism here, obviously, turn the Wi-Fi off, stop feeding them, make the house terrible, break the windows, you know, remove all the mm -hmm. comforts. Some of you have made the demon so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like I would live in you if I was a demon. I'm like, <laughs> dude, you're feeding me. I'm getting three hot meals a day. You know, you got high speed internet for me. You're just constantly feeding me movies and music 
I, I would say make yourself an uncomfortable place, starve the demons, starve them out, fast them out. Uh, I remember when I got delivered, I was like, I made myself an uncomfortable place and they just wanted to come out. My little yeah. sister delivered me in five minutes. So sometimes if you make yourself an uncomfortable place, the demons are like, I'm ready to go. And then someone just comes in, in five minutes, boom, the demons all leave. And we do see that happen. And I, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like every deliverance is five hours. Some are five minutes, depending if the person needs to be, you know, if yeah. their house is comfortable or not if you know what i'm saying if you know you know if you yeah. know you know and you deliver yourself yes you can but it's not biblical I, I, and i hate saying that but it's true biblically there was no example where jesus tells us to command the demons to come out of yourself have i seen god do it yes i tried doing it on myself and it didn't work when i first got saved I, it's there's reasons i'll give you why but biblically a person should be casting a demon out of a person now with that being said, let me preface it. God can do anything. God can deliver you instantly. God can deliver you in the night. God can deliver you in the morning. You can be in the drive-thru and God can deliver you. So we don't ever want to limit God. There's nothing impossible for God. So for me to say it's impossible for self-deliverance would be wrong. I've just seen it's highly ineffective if you're at that level where you have a lot of demons. So a couple things that could be hard in self-deliverance. Number one yeah. is the demons will manifest so you can't speak. Like if a demon's talking out of me, I can't say come out when it's trying to talk. So that could be one. Um, it's hard to discern a demon because you don't know if it's your thoughts or not because you're the one trying to do the deliverance. Mm -hmm. And nobody's there to pray you through. Mm -hmm. So James 5.16 says, if you confess your sins to one and another, there's, you know, God will forgive you and you'll be healed. But then it says the fervent prayer of the righteous man is powerful. So there's actual literal power mm -hmm. when I pray deliverance over you. Mm -hmm. So self-deliverance, if you're like an, on an island and you can't get to anybody, yeah. yes, it works. But hey, we have deliverance maps, we have ministries, we have online, we have deliverance, mass deliverance mm -hmm. on video where literally people tell me on your live stream, I rewatched it and I got delivered while you were praying. Tonight we're gonna pray. But mm -hmm. at the same time, yeah, God can, but it's just not, I can't say here's the scripture because it's not biblical, but I have seen some fruit. So I'm like right in the middle on the self-deliverance. What, what are your I'm, thoughts on I'm that? on the same as you. Um, you know, the Bible says freely you have received, freely you give to someone else. Good. So in um, in Jesus' culture, you you receive the benefit of deliverance, go and give it to 50 other people. That's good. And so it doesn't say, yeah, yeah, go around delivering yourself all the time. Um, I was laying in bed in Canada once and I started guessing names of demons that I might have. And I had this. <laughs> That's what you do late at night, yeah. just the guessing game. You might find this interesting. I had a dream when I was about 12, which was one of the most vivid ones I'd ever had. And I thought they were good angels and lay these like five it just looked like human beings in linen, glowing blue, floated through the ceiling. And then and then I felt what I thought was, you know, pure ecstasy, like happiness and joy. But it was probably kind of like when you take a drug ecstasy, now that I'm looking back on it. But at the time, it was like, I guess it was like a false born again type experience where I thought it was like angels from heaven. And the Bible does say, like, um, the devil can literally appear before you as an angel of yes. light. And so what gave away that they were probably demons or fallen angels or whatever they were was um, I had this weird moment where I grabbed one of them by the arm and I just said, um, can you um, give me something to remember you by? And I didn't have anything in mind, but I just, I just wanted something from it. It's like, it was like, give me something. And so it drew on my arm and an Egyptian scarab beetle basically is what, is what I thought it looked like. Wow. And so I thought I, I went to a deliverance person who was, um, Kind of like knew a bit about it, but at the same time did a lot of fake deliverance where that was like, oh, there's a, sh there's a, there's a bug on your shoulder. Let me pull it off. And it was like a pretend deliverance. <laughs> pretend so deliverance. She did pretend deliverance on me and no demons left because she didn't really fully understand how to do it, but she knew a bit about it. And she said, I think it's an Egyptian demon. And she, she guessed a demon named Isis, which is a, a, one of the Egyptian demons. Mm -hmm. And so I'm laying in bed in Canada and, you know, I've been preaching the gospel for 10 years at this point, and um, I'm like guessing the names of Egyptian demons. And I said, in the name of Jesus, spirit of Ra, come out. And there was not much response. And then I said, spirit of Osiris, come out. And my whole body started buzzing, like weird buzzing feeling up and down my body. And so I just kept rebuking it for like 15, 20 minutes. And I believe that's when it left. But there was no coughing. There was no yawning. There was yeah. no obvious sign that it had left. It was just the buzzing severely reduced. And then I think it stopped. Um, so that spirit eventually came out. And I'm literally telling this testimony at a um, house church in uh, Phoenix, actually. And there's this kid there who's about 12. So literally probably the age that I would have been probably when oh. I had that dream. And the kid, the minute I said spirit of Osiris, his whole body started buzzing. 
Wow. So some demons don't um, do the typical manifestation. Like I say the most common thing is pressure in the stomach. At the most number one most common manifestation is pressure coming up to the chest mm -hmm. and then moving weird feelings in your body like dizziness and spinning in the head. But um, buzzing I find is extremely rare. I find one in 50 deliverance. They go, my legs are buzzing. I feel buzzing uh, like electricity in my body. And so um, certain demons manifest in different ways. And mm. one I told you earlier is if we're rebuking demons tonight and you start feeling burning fire just suddenly appear in your stomach and chest, I have personally found that to be a spirit of Molech, which um, comes in through either abortion or generational human sacrifice. Wow. So like some ancestors were doing human sacrifice. And so that brings in a spirit of Molech and also Lilith likes Molech. They work together. Yeah. If you've had that demon come up. I've had, I had this lady we were doing deliverance on when you say that I thought about it and she was a children's pastor of the church and we actually took an entire church pastor leadership, like 30 of them through deliverance. So these were all pastors we were doing deliverance on. And I know a lot of religious people are going to hate that. They're like, what? You delivered a Christian? Yes. And uh, she was, her nose was flaring up and I was like, what is this lady doing? She's manifesting. I'm like, what is this lady doing? And her nose is flaring and she starts putting her hands like horns. And I'm like, what is she doing? Yeah, yeah. Like, I thought, okay, demon horns, right? She's Because mm -hmm. she was full on manifesting. Like, this wasn't her. It was a demon. So her nose is, like, flaring in a way you really couldn't make your nose, like, flared up. And then she's doing these horns. And I'm like, oh, it's like, a, it's Satan, right? It's a, it's a demonic spirit. And then she sits forward and starts rubbing her foot like this on the carpet. Like, she was going to, like, rush me or something. And the spirit's name was actually Bull. It was a spirit of Bull. And she, then I was like... She's flaring her nose. She's making <laughs> horns and yeah, she's do literally doing the bull thrash where, you know, the bulls yep. before they charge, they do that. Yep. So, and I've had, like, I had a lady, we, we talked about in the Come Out in Jesus Name documentary. She had a, a bird spirit and she was definitely afraid of birds. And yep. she was, you know, flapping like a bird during the deliverance. It's really weird how yep. these demons actually take, for, take our body and make us do what they are. And again, like I said, anger, bitterness, um, lust. And if you deal with like a spirit of perversion, which I know there's a lot of kids watching. Yeah. They'll do perverted things. So this is why I will yeah. never do deliverance on females without other females in the room, uh, a group of females. Like I won't just one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah. one pastor called me, said, hey, we have one of our pastors, female. She doesn't want anyone in the room but you. Um, it's a special circumstance, yeah. please. And we are in North Carolina. I was like, I will not do any deliverance because I, number one, I know if anything ever happened, it's her word versus mine. I'm yeah. not getting caught in that. But number yeah. two, some of these sexual demons are sexual and they do sexual yeah. things. And so I don't want to be touching you. I don't want to be <laughs> dealing with that because... These things are really dark. They're perverted. I've looked at yep. people's faces as it's contorted. I've seen eyes go completely black. This will strike unbelief in you. I've seen teeth go super, sh get super sharp physically. And you're like, how could eyes turn completely black? How could teeth go sharp? How could people mm. levitate? The spiritual realm has a way of invading the natural realm, transcending from just being a spiritual thing. And this is why I think it's good that atheists, unbelievers see yep. deliverance because yep. physically something's happening there. I've seen people crawl up a wall. It's like, how yeah. could you crawl up a wall? I've seen it. Demons do these things. And so yeah. some of these things, I had one lady go on all fours upside down like a spider and contort her head upside down. And I'm like, how? Mm -hmm. Physically, that's mm -hmm. impossible. And this was a normal business lady 20 minutes ago, and now she's an <laughs> inverted spider, like crawling at <laughs> me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but these demons do these crazy things that when you start getting in it, you're like, this is real. Yeah. This is happening, you know? One of the types of deliverances that I find the most interesting, and I think this is going to resonate with you, is when the demon starts giving the person visions of what their ancestors did thousands of mm, years ago. And yeah. they, they say, I'm seeing a sacrifice. I'm seeing this. Yep. I'm seeing that. And next thing you know, you've been taken on a journey of like 5,000 years of their exact ancestors' yep. stories and what they were doing a long time ago in these ancient places, worshiping these ancient gods. Yeah. Yeah, we had one little girl that we were doing deliverance on. Well, she was about 12, but her mom was there. You know, if we have young people, their parents need to be there for a bunch of reasons. But we were praying for her. And there was a generation. She kept saying, I always have thoughts of killing people. I always have thoughts of when my mom's driving, grabbing the wheel. And she's 12, like sweet little girl, like no 12-year-olds no out there trying to kill people unless it's a demon. So she's having nonstop thoughts of wanting to kill her family. Normal girl, you know, the church would have told her she's crazy. She needs to go mm -hmm. on meds. They yeah. would have medicated her. We start doing deliverance and the demon speaks out, says, I'm the generational curse of um, murder. And seven generations ago, blah, 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 this thing happened. Well, it checked out. Her mom said, mm -hmm. yes, there's a wow. story. Her mom said, we didn't ever really know about it much, but there's this like story that's been passed down in our family to where this uncle in the family killed his whole family. And here you have a little girl, think about this, seven generations later, a little girl, 12 years old, 
now has a spirit of murder because of a generational curse from seven mm -hmm. generations ago that her mom said, yeah, we, we thought it was just like a story in the family. Like, hey, we had mm -hmm. an uncle who killed his whole family seven generations. But this demon was there tormenting this little girl. And so, again, my heart, I, I'll, I'll say what I said starting. My heart breaks, and I get emotional talking about it, but my heart breaks for the millions of people that don't know about this, that are struggling in yeah. silence, that are just fighting and fighting. And I look at Luke no. 13 where Jesus goes, you untie your donkeys on the Sabbath, but you're mad that I untied this woman. And he says, doesn't she deserve to be loosed? Like, yeah. don't, don't, doesn't your family deserve to be free? Yes. And that's the, really why this documentary is being made, why we preach this. The world deserves this. They deserve to be able to get free by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And it's actually sad that so many people watching, friends and family are dying, are suicidal, are depressed or anxious. When we literally have the answer, we have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the authority of Jesus. And so, man, my I move with compassion. Everything I do with deliverance is motivated by compassion because I my heart actually breaks for all these people that don't know they have demons. Yeah. They just yeah. don't know they need freedom. Yeah. And you might you might resonate with this as well. Sometimes we're in an Airbnb and like we're we've already been doing ministry for like a week straight. We're exhausted. And we'll get a call or a text and it'll be like, you know, I'm being tormented. The voices mm. are blaspheming God in, in my head. They're doing this, that, and the other. I mean, you can name all the things the demons are doing, right? Literally raping them in the yep. middle of the yep. night, which which I found always to be either succubus or incubus yeah. when they can actually feel the attack coming sexually. And so, um, you know, we'll be in an Airbnb trying to have a holiday and I'm like, I got to help this woman. Like, just pause the romantic date to my wife. I'm like, let's just deliver this lady. And we're on the phone for the next two hours. And, yes. and then and then I'm on there going, no, you listen to me, Jezebel. Yeah. <laughs> you listen to me. On the phone with Jezebel. Hey, Who are you talking to, Jezebel? Next one, I'm a spirit of Lucifer. And I'm like, you spirit of Lucifer. You Satan, you come out in Jesus' name. Next thing you know, we're walking out of the Airbnb and like the owner's looking at me and her and there's no one else. And he's like, that guy's just been calling his wife all night a, a, a <laughs> yeah. demon, a devil, a, a, a Jezebel, a Lilith. Like he's so abusive, like judging me because like there's only the two of us and I'm screaming at the top yes. of my lungs. And you're not supposed to scream at the top of your lungs when you do deliverance. Yeah. If if people do that when I'm training, I say, hey, you're going to lose your voice in five minutes. The demon's still going to be there. Yeah. So I say never scream, but sometimes you get so it caught It feels up like it moment. works though. Sometimes <laughs> when I'm screaming, I'm like, it just feels like it works. And, yeah. and I'll, I'll push back on that as well. I, I agree with you because I'm like, I don't like losing my voice, but the same time i'll tell my kids like and i didn't really start learning this until i started having kids and i have four now and like i should probably stop at some point but we'll probably have <laughs> 10 but i'll tell the de i'll tell my kids like go clean your room and they don't listen and demons really are like kids in a lot of ways and i'll be like go clean your room and they don't listen go and at some point it's like okay i've tried yeah. calmly yeah. i have i've tried and like when i'm doing deliverance i start calm i really do but then at some point it's like go clean your room and they're like okay i'll go because the intensity of your voice yeah. like it it um, it communicates yeah. seriousness. Yeah. So like I have this thing where when I'm casting out demons and I'm sitting down and, and people that do deliverance with me, I did a deliverance last week and I did this and they know what's going to happen if I do this, but it's like, I'm sitting down. We always start sitting down and we always end up like either wrestling around or whatever, but I'll start calm. I'll start quiet. And I'm like, come out, come out. And then when I get to the point where I'm so annoyed and irritated that the demon won't leave, I, I stand up. I'm like, if I stand up and you're still sitting and I'm, we're going to war here because yeah. I'm not, I'm tired of dealing with you. We've been wrestling for an hour and then I'll just start, I said, come out and I'll start yelling. And I know like theoretically you don't have to yell, but sometimes there are demons that are so stubborn that I'm like raising your voice. Just maybe it just yeah. feels like it yeah. works. But I know Don Dickerman told me like, you don't need to yell. Yeah. I'm like, uh, sometimes I like to. So one, like of, one of the common mistakes that people make is they just talk too soft. And the funny thing is Canada is like the most polite country on earth. Yes. And my wife's Canadian okay. for those who don't know. And, uh, her as well as everyone almost in Canada, I had to stop saying to them, like, don't say please or thank you. It's a demon. <laughs> it's a demon. Um, <laughs> they would, they would, they would, they would like keep saying sorry after coughing out demons. And I'd be like, it, it, it's evil. It wants to kill you. We're not saying please, thank you, or sorry. We're saying get out in Jesus' name. And after a while, I'm like, I think God sent me as an Australian to Canada because they don't know how to deliver because they're so polite to demons. So that sorry to the do demons this. weren't really responding to the Canadians. And they were like, can you please come out? No, stop saying please. It's an evil demon. It wants to kill you. Command it to come out. And um, I've had people that I've... I told my wife about seven times, I'm like, you're speaking too nicely. Yeah. Um, get angry at it. Like, don't scream your head off, but speak with authority. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, come out. And she's like, I've never spoken to anyone like that before. Yeah. I'm like, well, it's time to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny too, because I remember being delivered and it's good to go through deliverance because when you do it, you know what it's like because you've gone through it. Yeah. But I remember in my head when my sister was praying, like when she would say, come out to a certain spirit, in my head, I was like, 
Yes, like when she said that I felt it respond. So oftentimes like, yeah, man, we have to drive them out. Like if we think of deliverance as a wrestling match, which it is, yeah. yes, there's times where wrestling is calm, but it's a violent sport. It's a yeah. slamming you on your back. I'm holding you down. Then you slam me on my back. Now you're holding me down and we're wrestling. It's like somebody's going to pin somebody and I'm not losing this. Yeah. So I'm going to, so yeah, I know, I know the teaching of like, be calm and don't. And I've had guys that are more seasoned that have done tens of thousands. They're like, you don't need to yell, but it's like, Hey dude, I'm half Hispanic, half Italian, half Chihuahua. <laughs> I <have to> <laughs> like just let me yell if I want to yell. You know what I mean? Cause sometimes I feel like the point just doesn't get across, but yeah, I, yeah, totally. But we usually the main problem. We're usually getting people to speak a little louder cause it's usually like a little polite. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. This is off topic. I know you're supposed no, that's to be right. we'll, me. We'll have a break from the interview. Yeah, yeah, and we're editing all this too. So you guys can use whatever you want to use. Um, this is so funny. Do you ever feel bad at times? Because there's times where the demon's like crying and they're like, please. And they, like I've had one moment where I was like, yeah. Poor I demon. kind of feel bad. I'm like this thing, because you're really, you're evicting them from their home. Like yeah. they live there. And some of them are like, <laughs> like a spirit of religion. It's not necessarily like really that like going to kill you, but I don't know. I've had times where I'm like, a part of me feels bad, but then the next second I'm like, I come out in Jesus' name. But really, yeah. there's times where they are sad. Like, have you ever had a yeah, demon yeah. cry and be like, so I really a spirit, don't want to go? There's a spirit called sorrow, a spirit called grief. Yes. And That's what I'm talking there's about. There's another one called sadness. So there's three sad spirits. And then we have one type of deliverance that we call the wailer, where the person just starts wailing. Yes. And so it's usually the demon crying. And so when, when we're teaching deliverance, we teach people, listen, don't get in your car and drive home when people start screaming, because here's the deal. It's like a little child having a tantrum because yes. it can't get the candy that it wants. So don't, don't drive home just because a child is having a tantrum. So why would you be any different? Because in little evil spirits having a little tantrum, I don't want to come out. Yep. So we teach people all the screaming is, is a demon tantrum. It mm. doesn't want to come out and it has to come out. Now, as, the, as to what you said, do you ever feel sorry for him? When I was a little earlier on in it and uh, they would start to cry and please, I had one that I've had a few pleading with yes, me. Yes, I'll do don't anything. Let, don't cast me out. I have nowhere to go. And then I've had ones with a bit of, um, oh, what's the word, a bit of sass. Well, where am I going to go? <laughs> well, what am, I, what am I supposed to do when I come out? <laughs> And there was one, I got so sick of it not coming out. I mean, this is kind of a funny thing to talk about, but I was like, I was like at the point where I just wanted to get out of the person so bad. I was like, I'll tell you what, you can go into a horse. <laughs> and then it was, <laughs> and then it was asking me where, where is the horse? And I, and I, and I was like, well, there's a farm if, Dude, and I'm giving it directions. I'm giving it directions. I'm going 45 Dude. minutes South. There's some really nice valleys and farms and I'm negotiating with it. If you will leave this person, there's some really nice horses you can graze and run in the sun. You have a happy life there. Just do it. Just go. I just wanted it out. Like the horses, the, the, whatever. It's not a person. I'm and then sweaty. the you other joke, the other joke, the other joke we have is, well, um, if they, if they potentially going to try and harass somebody else, why don't we just tell them to go into like Bill Gates? And so we are, we have this we have this running joke where we're like, I command you to possess and torment Bill Gates and you go into Trudeau and we have these we have these running jokes of telling the dude. We don't actually do that, by the way. We don't actually dude, do I'm that. Sweating. I'm we just sweating. we just joke about it. <laughs> I was in um I, I was in this one city in Australia called I'm crying, Adelaide. I was, I'm crying. I was in this one city called Adelaide. And the girl's manifesting a demon and this religious pastor comes in and goes, goes, does she have the Holy Spirit? And we said, well, probably. She's kind of a Christian. She's kind of a compromising Christian. She might have the Holy Spirit. None of us can see. We don't have our x-ray sunglasses on. Let me go and get my x-ray sunglasses on and check if she has the Holy Spirit. And he's like, well, if she has the Holy Spirit, she can't possibly have a demon. And I'm just like, I can just oh. see the pride emanating from his teaching. And I'm just like, dude, I kind of lost it with this guy. And it's, I was in his church but I'd ask permission to use the building from somebody else. And so I was like, are you, are you, are you blind? Like, look, open your eyes, man. She's manifesting a demon. Let's worry about how many Holy Spirit was. She has the Holy Spirit later. Now this is the funny part. She kicks off her shoe and my friend doesn't like the fact that the demon is getting, getting its way. So my friend, Adam, he turns around and he goes, I command you before you come out, you put back that shoe. You put the, you put the shoe back on her foot. And I'm really not expecting anything to happen. And the demon's totally in control at this moment of her body, which doesn't mean it owns her. It's just because it's manifesting. So it's surfaced. It's all the way up. So it's at the surface. And it, it grabs the shoe while reluctantly growling. And it starts tying the laces <laughs> of his shoe and going, <laughs> arr, arr, arr. and then the joke after that was, 
yeah, before you come out, you clean my whole house, you <laughs> demons. And then, and then friends come over and they're like, why is your maid always growl? <laughs> well, yeah, oh, before we cast it out, we put it to work, you know, but. I'm dying. That you was... said you wanted some humor in this, so here we go. We got it. I'll tell you a story. I had a friend of mine. Is we're telling funny stories, and we'll go back to the interview here. But I had a friend of mine that was doing deliverance with like a famous, well-known evangelist. So they're in this prayer line. This is a true story. They're in a church. I've never told this on live, but it's funny. They're in this church. They're in the prayer line, and there's this. Uh, how do I say this without being too rude here? A large man, a very large. His territory was expanded. He was a mega church, right? If we're all temples of the Holy Ghost, this guy was a mega church. So he was a large guy. And my friend's, my friend's praying with this evangelist, so he's like shadowing him, he's catching for whatever for him. And the evangelist is like, hey, you know, what do you need prayer for, man? And the man's like, oh, I have the spirit of, you know, like gluttony. Like I eat, I eat, I overeat all the time and like I'm a really bad overeater. So he's like, okay, let's pray. So he starts praying, I command the spirit of gluttony to come out. And the spirit's like, rah, I'm gluttony. And the, the spirit's full on manifesting. And the guy's like, come out, what is your name? He's like, gluttony, you know, talking about how he wants to make the man eat food. And the guy says, come out in Jesus' name. And the demon goes, oh, come out. For a cookie. <laughs> they literally said, I'll come out for a cookie. He told the guy that. So I told the guy, from now on, when you're on the prayer line, you need to have a pack of Oreos Ready with you every time. Yeah, the spirit of gluttony <laughs> said, I'll come out for a cookie. I died when this guy told me the story. I was dying. I'm like, someone said mega church. I was dying when he said, I'll come out for a cookie. But yeah, I don't have a ton of funny stories from deliverance. There yeah. are times where, because I won't like, of course, we won't laugh during deliverance. And those of you that are like, this is so wrong, but we won't laugh during the deliverance. But there's times where it's like really hard because demons, sometimes they just say the dumbest stuff. Yeah, dumb like the things. demons literally say some stuff they say. I'm like, you are so yeah. dumb to even think that. But yeah, they'll have they'll have weird things. And like, there's times where my team, I could tell they're trying not to laugh. And I'm like, don't yeah. laugh. Cause we don't want to ever like laugh and uh, make right. them think we're weak. So it's like, we always have to keep a straight face. And then later we're like, right. dude, I, I was having a hard time not laughing. Cause some of the stuff they say, they're, yeah. they're like little kids. They just That's say That's funny stuff. that you do that. Cause what we do is we'll laugh, all of us right in the middle of the oh, deliverance really? yeah. for like, <laughs> for like five <laughs> minutes <laughs> straight. And and then and well, and then after the laughing, like I'll turn to the church that, that I'm in and I'll say, guys, you can either laugh or you can cry. Yeah. So I choose to laugh. Yeah. Like, yeah. I always am like, if I laugh, it's gonna show that I'm weak, you know. And really? they're already like, you're never gonna cast me out. I've been here for a thousand years, and so I'm always like trying to flex on them and be like, yeah. I'm stronger than you, quoting yeah. scripture. So I feel like if I laugh, they're gonna be like, well, oh, he, you're here's weak. my revelation to you. They still come out after you've laughed at them. Yeah, yeah. You still come out. Yeah, for sure. That's my my understanding so far that you that cuz I always say you can either laugh or you can cry and then we get back into the deliverance. The other one that was semi semi funny was um I was trying to find out how these particular viking demons came into this girl and they had come into the father and um they were saying kind of really quite interesting funny things and they were saying things like um he's our friend, we like him. And even in the girl, the daughter, they were like, "Oh, we like her. She's fun." And she's like a really funny, fun person. And they're like, we like being in her. She's fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we're, we're trying to find out how they got in. And I'm like, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. I'm getting all serious. And I'm just like, how did you Viking spirits get here? And I'm meaning like, was there a human sacrifice? Yeah. Was there a murder? And the thing just looks at me like a bit of a clown. And it goes, we came here on a boat. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> we came on a boat. And then I realized his ancestors immigrated to Canada <laughs> from from Scandinavia and the demons were in the ancestors who immigrated on a boat. Oh man. I remember a demon was telling me that I came all the way from Africa. I don't even want to be here. Why'd you bring me here on that airplane? And I was like, yeah, some of these demons, I mean, they've had to travel. I mean, imagine being a demon and you end up in a place like, you know, where you don't want to be like yeah. you, you just, I don't want to name cities here cause I'll get in trouble, but I was thinking <laughs> of one in particular, no. but you end up in some of these States where you're like, yeah. man, you brought me to Oklahoma. Like, yeah. dude, I was over there in LA yeah. and you brought me all the way out here. But yeah, man, that's funny. All right, let's go. We'll go it back. It kind of depends here. what street you live on in LA. Cause if you're on Skid Row, that might <laughs> yeah, be an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> needle, needle. I'm street. sweating so bad. Um, so, yeah, we kind of think um, we we go out to diners afterwards because everyone's so exhausted and hungry. Yes, and we just sit around talking and laughing about what's just happened in the meeting. So yeah. we'll be like, let's debrief. And some of our best memories are just like 
sitting around late night at like Applebee's or wherever, just ordering ribs. And then um, when you're the preacher, you never pay. So that's good as well. Yeah, yeah. And then you're just sitting there and everyone's going, did you see that one when the eyes went red? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the one when the eyes went red. And, you know, just the kind of all the moments of victories over the devil. And yeah. like I'll kind of keep a loose count of how many demons came out. And I'll be like, okay, guys, I have a scoreboard here. 111 demons came out today. So that's 111 points for Jesus' team and zero for Satan. It's and it's like a little scoreboard. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird too because people are so afraid of laughing or afraid of having fun. And honestly, and again, a lot of the stuff we're saying tonight only makes sense if you do deliverance. Like to most people, it's like, that doesn't make sense. But deliverance is fun. Like deliverance is absolutely fun. Yeah. And so I think if guys started getting into deliverance, they would be less spending eight hours a day on Call of Duty. I'm yeah. like, dude, once you do deliverance, yeah. video games, all the sports, you know, going to the park, all that stuff just becomes boring. Yeah. And when you don't do deliverance, like I know some people that are so bored as Christians, I don't even know how they're still Christian. I'm like, how do you even survive? Like you gave up all of your partying, all your drinking, all yeah. of everything to just go to do church nothing. on Sunday. You <laughs> don't lay hands. You don't see miracles. Yeah. You don't baptize. Yeah. When you start doing these supernatural things like casting out demons, baptizing people, discipling, staying up late, praying and having stories and going yeah. out to in and out at one in the morning and be like, did you guys see that? That miracle that happened? The guy got out of the wheelchair. Like for me, these were the early days of salvation and I don't ever want to lose that. Like I don't ever want to become this plastic, professional, yeah. boring, dry, stale, just like some of these pastors out here are like drier than cracker juice. I'm like, dude, you are so dry. Mm. You are so dead. There's no life. There's no fun. And right. I really, one of the things I loved about the show, The Chosen, which I know is people like, I hate The yeah. Chosen. Yeah. You, can go, you can go hate it somewhere else. But one of the things I loved about yeah. it was it made it look like fun. Like the disciples were laughing oh, yeah, at Jesus. Did. I was like, I yeah. want to hang out with Jesus. Like the way they portrayed him, he wasn't this uptight Pharisee. Yeah, that's he good. was just like, we're living life, having fun. And I really yeah. feel like Jesus was a guy you'd want to be around. Yeah. I don't think he was going to be this like stale, dry, just boring guy. Yeah. So I love the laughter. Like me and my wife, we get on here and we laugh and joke and people get so mad. They're like, how dare you laugh? I'm like, what? You don't ever laugh? So I think it's 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 fun to enjoy it. There's camaraderie when you're yeah. talking stories and stuff. Yeah. And when it comes to movies like that, um, even if it's 90%, you know, biblically accurate and perfect and it's 10% like, you know, license, creative license, they call it, when you're not necessarily yeah. sticking with the Bible, but you're just saying what might have happened in between scriptures and... Um, you know, maybe there could have been a little more deliverance in the movie and even a couple more miracles. Yeah. Um, but uh, just the fact that it brings Jesus into the aware people's awareness. Yes. I mean, they're thinking about the football. football. They're thinking about what they're going to eat for breakfast and lunch. Yep. And uh, not to pick on Americans here, but this is, this <laughs> is, this is a true story. So like, um, you know, I travel the world. I go to like 20 different countries of preach and, you know, move in deliverance and train in deliverance. And uh, it's the one country where people are like, what do you guys want to eat for lunch? What do you guys want to have for dinner? It's like, what about this place? Oh, I know a really good food place here and a really good food place there. But now it's catching on. And, you know, in Australia, they'll say, oh, she's a foodie and he's a foodie. Yeah. And if someone says he's a foodie, it means like he'll be like, what do you guys want to do for dinner? There's this diner here. It's rated five stars on this. <laughs> That's app. a normal it's like, American. It's like a big deal as like part of our experience of the day is like where we're going to eat. But it got me for a while and yeah. I started to put on a bit of weight every time I travel across. <laughs> yeah. Americans love to eat. That's but I have sure. embraced the food. So now I'm like, oh, Applebee's. Oh, this one. Oh, that one. In fact, a funny Applebee's story. I was doing. Oh, a... Don't talk about Applebee's. Everyone knows in my chat. I hate Applebee's. They okay. have demons, but go ahead. No, right. go ahead. I like ribs and they do yeah. the big ribs. Yeah. And uh, we'll pray for you after for so deliverance. And, and anyway, I'm easily pleased, man. You yeah, give me yeah. ribs. They, they, it was burnt last time and I still ate it. And know? they microwave their food, but it's all I, good. I yeah. complained. Yeah. I said, oh, it was burnt. So yeah. don't burn it next time. So anyway, this lady was in the toilet in Applebee's. And as she's there, she told me the story later. And as she's there, she's like flicking through her phone and realizing, hey, I'm missing that mass deliverance teaching because it's one just like tonight. And so she's scrolling through Facebook. She puts on her little headphones and hits play. Now, I didn't know this, but her father was the grand master of Freemasons. Wow. And as she literally clicked play is right when I started going after Freemason demons. Wow. So she picks up the phone to and, and listens to... Freemason demon, you listen to me. I have authority over you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I like to say, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach, you will come out right now. And she's like, and then just starts vomiting out all these demons wow. in the toilet. And luckily there's a toilet right there. Yeah, so yeah. all the demons go straight into the to toilet. At the Applebee's bathroom. Yep, yep. And she said, I cleaned myself up and, uh, you know, went to the bath sink and everything. And she said, I came back and sat down with my friends like nothing happened. 
Wow. I didn't even tell him she was Those delivered. demons probably came right out of her and went right into the food at Applebee's. <laughs> yeah, the Applebee's needs. Lord, right now, touch Applebee's in Jesus' name. They got issues over there. But anyways, that's a whole There's a story. good buffet in this town, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, we had a buffet in this town. I was like, how can you get all this food for $14? We'll have to like, check it out. I was like, this would be $30 in Australia. <laughs> all right, we'll go back. If you want to ask anything else, I know we've been live yeah, an hour and questions. 20 minutes. We have a couple more here. Where do you tell demons to go? Okay, so we tell demons to go to the pit or the abyss. Now, I know there's, again, a lot of these are controversial. Well, this one shouldn't be, but people are like, I, I had one, I, there's one big teaching out there. I don't know who started it, but the guy says, like, we tell them to go into a box. Have you heard this? Like, they lock the box. Never okay. Heard it in my yeah, life. they say they go. I would they, never do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you send them into horses, but they say, no. <laughs> one I'm, just time. I'm just kidding. They say, uh, we go, go into a locked box and go to like the feet of Jesus. And some people teach, like, send them to Jesus. But in my mind, it's like, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. I'm like, the demons are not going to go to Jesus. So I tell them to go to the pit or the abyss. And we know, like, in Mark, they said, don't, they beg to not go there. And Luke 8 31, they say, don't send us to the deep or the abyss. So in my mind, if the demons don't want to go there, it's probably a good place to send them. Uh, Romans 10, 7 says the abyss is the place of the dead. Revelation 17 says the Antichrist will come out of the abyss. Revelation 20 says the abyss is where Satan will be for a thousand years in chains. Revelation 9 says the abyss is this place under the earth where smoke comes out. So the abyss or the pit, same thing, is a place, in my opinion, from studying scripture where the demons are held until judgment. So we know the demons are going to be judged one day. And they even said, yeah. like, have you come to judge us before the time? So yeah. before they're judged... I don't want to just cast a demon out and then send it back into circulation. Like I want to get it out of circulation. I don't want yeah. a demon to come out of you and then jump into the guy next to you. Yeah. So way, the way we do that is we command him to go into the abyss and they can return no more. And then Jesus did tell the demon return, return no more, never return. So mm. oftentimes it's like, in Jesus' name, we command you to come out, go into the abyss, and never return. You know, we cancel your assignment, your contract. You can't pass it on. Because if there's 10 demons, when a demon leaves, it'll try to pass its assignment to another demon in the person. So I always like to say, like, do not pass on your assignment. Do not pass on your duties to any other demon. But yeah, ultimately, we send them to the abyss or the pit because mm -hmm. it's the only place in Scripture they don't want to go. Yep. So that's oftentimes why we do we that. We get a lot of people say, send them to Jesus. And, and I said once, I said, the problem with this teaching is, can you imagine a demon leaving earth, going through the second heaven, going into the holy of holies where Jesus is, <laughs> yeah. floating through the guards, through the cherub with fiery swords? Yep. Like, is the evil spirit going to make it all the way there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. We don't send them to Jesus. I'm like, Jesus gave us the power and the authority. And in fact, like, when we do deliverance, yes, we ask, but Jesus never told us to even ask him to deliver. He gave us the power to do it. So he didn't tell, in, in this, people say, oh, that's blasphemy. Well, go read the Bible. It's, it's literally in there. He mm. didn't tell them to even like go pray for the sick. He said, go heal the sick. He didn't tell them to go pray deliverance. He said, go cast out devils. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing deliverance, we're not begging Jesus to deliver the person. We're taking our authority that he's given us. And in fact, they had the authority even before the Holy Spirit. That's a whole nother teaching. But we take our authority over the demon. We're not negotiating. We're not like, hey, you, you know, you two of you stay, two of you go. Let's figure this out. We're commanding them. We're taking authority over them. Yeah. We're walking in the authority that Jesus gave us. It's not, it's not our authority. We're not coming mm -hmm. in our name. We're coming in his name. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's crucial to do that. Um, autism and schizophrenia, how, how many of those do you think are demonic as opposed to not demonic? Yeah, another super controversial one when it comes to mental illness. I started researching schizophrenia because I started seeing all these people that are like, well, schizophrenia is not a demon. And friends of mine, right, that are watching this right now, yeah. uh, they're like, it's not a demon, Isaiah, don't say that. So I started researching, okay, so what is schizophrenia? Mm -hmm. If you start reading about it, yeah. it literally it's is totally hearing demonic. voices and seeing, seeing things. And multiple personalities. Yes, and multiple. So... I'm like, those are the three main signs of having a demon. So what happens is That's if right. you have hearing voices, seeing things, multiple yeah. personality, what's going to happen? Okay, you're going to go to the doctor. Yeah. The doctor is not going to say you have a demon, you need yeah. to get delivered. No doctor ever is going to say that. Yeah. They're going to say you need medication because you have schizophrenia, yeah. you have bipolar, you have whatever they label it. So oftentimes people are being misdiagnosed thinking they're mentally ill when really yeah. they just have a demon. And I, I, I just talked to people, someone recently that had was diagnosed actually she was on our show last week schizophrenia right they said oh you're schizophrenic yeah and i was like well how did they diagnose you she's like well i just went told them i hear voices and see things and they gave me medication yeah. there's no like brain scan where like no. oh there's a chemical 10 no. percent of your brain so is there mental illnesses where it's a chemical imbalance yes but there are a lot of people being misdiagnosed that have demons and they'll hold up an encyclopedia of 300 mental disorders and say, okay, let's find which one you have. Yeah. When that's just a book yeah. of demons. Like it's at the end of the demons. day, yeah. a lot of these mental illnesses are just names of demons. Mm -hmm. and, and this is another question I have. Okay. If a lot of these mental illnesses, I know this is a hot, hot take here. If a lot of these mental illnesses are not demonic, why is it mm -hmm. every time it's something bad? 
Why why is a schizophrenia <laughs> demon not saying go help your neighbor, go give them <laughs> go money? And love someone. Yeah, go love on the person next <laughs> to you. The the demons are always telling you cut your arm, hurt yourself, punch yourself. We hate you. Why is it always dark images? Why yeah. are you never seeing good things and flowers and roses? You're always seeing dark images and they say, "Oh, I saw a ninja." It's like, you know, you have all these people seeing demonic things. If it's not a demon, why is like the Tourette's? Like people have Tourette's, right? It's a huge no, thing right they're now. Never blessing people. Yeah, the Tourette's are never like, "God bless you. Jesus loves you." It's always like cuss words. And this is a big thing people that have Tourette say, you know, the thing makes them cuss all the time. So yeah. my mind is like, if it's the fruit is rotten, then the tree, the root is probably rotten as well. And so the mm -hmm. not again, not every mental illness is a demon, but contrary to probably a lot of my friends, I would yeah. say a lot of them are yeah. a lot of them are even with like, so like, for instance, autism is yeah. a huge one. And one of the ways they diagnose you aut autism, yeah. and there's a thousand different spectrums yeah. of autism, but one of them is nonverbal. Mm -hmm. And if you go to like the Bible, there was people in there that couldn't speak mm -hmm. and Jesus cast the demon out and they could speak now. Yeah. So could that be, a, could, could have that guy in the Bible been autistic or the young boy? Mm -hmm. I think it's in Mark nine, seizures. the father brings his, yes, yeah, seizures. Yeah. He's throwing himself epileptic. in fire. Exactly. He had mm -hmm. epilepsy and Jesus is like, oh, this is a demon. And the demon was trying to make the boy kill himself. Mm. So it was also suicidal. Yeah. And then the boy's foaming at the mouth. He's falling over. So, mm -hmm. and then Jesus says, well, what's wrong with him? How long has this happened? And the symptoms were a sign he had a demon. That's a whole teaching. But my point is I lean more mm -hmm. again. I know it's a hot take. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could disagree with other people. I lean more on like, let's yeah. deal with the demon first. Yeah. And if it's not a demon, yeah. then yeah, let's go to the doctor. Praise yeah. the Lord for physicians. Yeah. Luke was a physician, but I don't, I, I'm, I'm afraid we're throwing medication at demons uh, and we're making yeah. people more demonized and we're just yeah. like numbing the demons rather than delivering people. Absolutely. Um, if I can share a quick story, one guy got delivered and then he said, these are all the pills that I was on and it had every yes. color of the rainbow, right? Yeah. There was yellow, green, blue. And I held up the pill packet to the guy, thousands of pills. And I said to him, do you realize you are feeding drugs to a demon Yes. and trying to get healed? And it turns the whole medical system on its head a little bit because it's like, oh, this will fix you. And it's like, you were just giving pills to demons. Can you see how stupid that was? Yes. Like Jesus will deliver you and he's your deliverer. So we get people to repent of addiction to pharmacia. Did you know 80% of the world's pharmacy drugs are used in one country? Wow. I yeah. believe it. Oh, yeah. 80% epidemic. of all pharmacia. It's an epidemic. Here. Yeah. And for those in the chat, too, is like we, I, well, at least what we do, I don't know what you do, but we always tell people don't start, stop taking your stuff. Mm -hmm. We're not telling you throw it out and get, mm -hmm. we're telling you go through deliverance and then go yeah. to your doctor and yeah. be like, I don't have these yeah, symptoms. The and a lot of these things are like, these are, um, when it comes to these medications, these are not keeping you alive. So like, I would never tell somebody, mm -hmm. oh, we prayed for you to get healed of diabetes, don't take any more insulin. Yeah. Cause that medicine is keeping you alive. Yeah. A lot of these antidepressants, and I know no, we're gonna probably yeah. get flagged for talking about this. These medicines mm -hmm. are not keeping you alive. They're yeah. keeping you a zombie. And yeah. they've done studies like in the UK, yeah. which of course these studies are not getting yeah. released, but they did a study recently in the UK where they said these uh, antidepressants are not even changing mm -hmm. your serotonin levels. They're mm -hmm. just literally shutting down your receptors down. and making you numb. Yeah. They're making you a shell of a person. Person. So yeah. again, we're not telling you guys don't take your meds, but a lot of these meds are not keeping you alive. They're making things worse. And they say, if you take this, mm -hmm. you know, you won't be hearing suicidal thoughts, but you'll have a thousand other issues now. So now you're not hearing yeah. suicidal thoughts, but now you're addicted to a hundred other things. Yeah. So yeah, there's a major, I, 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 we need to figure out a way to confront this, talk about this. There's a huge taboo and it's almost like you get in a lot of trouble for doing what we're doing mm -hmm. now and saying mm -hmm. like that mental disorder could be a demon, mm -hmm. but we also have to expose the devil and not yeah. be afraid. And yeah. this is the same thing with the, alphabet community, right? Yeah. There's deliverance available, but we're so afraid to talk about it because yeah. we're going to get flagged. We're going to get banned in trouble, arrested. Mm -hmm. But like the alphabet community massively needs deliverance. Mm -hmm. And we've seen many of them get delivered and free. And now yeah. they're married and now they have kids and now um, they, mm -hmm. don't he they don't have the same sex attractions anymore. So I think the mental illness and the alphabet community are like sacred cows that yeah, we can't talk cow. about. Yep. But God's like, no, I want to yep. deliver them and free them too. And some say, well, I don't, I don't need deliverance. I was just born this way. Well, you won't be born again that way. So maybe yep. you don't need deliverance. Maybe you just need to be born again. But at the end of the day, like God can deliver you. And I've seen it over and over, that spirit. Yep. And it's a very, very sexual spirit, you know, that people have a spirit of perversion. And God can deliver you from that as well. Yeah. And uh, just because somebody's problem is not demons doesn't mean they don't still have demons. Yes. So one example I give is... Christians see a, uh, a man in a wheelchair, the first thing they do is let's pray for you to stand and let's pray for you to walk. And I'm like, you realize nobody's ever offered the poor guy deliverance? Yes. The guy could be bound by 30 demons yeah. and you can't get past your vision of your flesh that tells you he can't walk, he's in a wheelchair. And it's like, 
do you realize he might be tormented in his mind and it might be even worse than the yeah. the other condition? And then oftentimes the demon, we did we dealt with a lady from India that was in a wheelchair and she's like, I don't know why I'm in a wheelchair. Doctors don't know my legs just don't work. And this mm -hmm. was in Southern California. I'll never forget this. And we're praying and praying and praying and everyone's praying, heal her Lord. And we're in, a, we're in a big revival. And so we're like, hey, she's in a wheelchair. It's clear if she's going to walk or not. And those are those yeah. ones where it's like, are you going to pray? Am I going to pray? Right? Yeah. So we pray, pray, pray. And the Lord told me like, this is not a, a sickness. This is a demonic spirit. Wow. And so he started giving me some download of Hinduism and generational blood line so i start praying for her and she starts rah, growling you know what do you want from us why why are you here we're going to keep her in this wheelchair and the demon's like we're going to keep her in this wheelchair a long story well it wasn't a long story it was a 10 minute story she gets fully delivered from those demons and gets wow. up and walks and she's Lord, fine Lord. right so in my mind we would have spent how long praying lord heal her heal her yeah. and i've had many times where yeah. i pray healing and i yeah. believe in healing we yeah. love it but god's like oh no they don't need healing they need deliverance. deliverance you know we have had, had yeah. that over and over and so when the demon comes out whether you want to say it unlocks your healing. In my opinion, the demon, the infirmity is the sickness. And when the demon leaves, they're instantly there well. There is no sickness. Exactly, because yeah. the demon was. And if you guys are like, where's that in the Bible, Luke 13? 18 yeah, years. She was bound. There's a know? blind person, a deaf person, and a mute person yep. that all get healed through deliverance. Yes. Um, just to add to what you were saying, um, the deliverance is quick and easy. But if you're praying healing, and, and I say this all the time, demons do not come out by blessing prayers or healing prayers or, or prophecies. Yes. And people people look shocked at me like, what do you mean they don't come out through healing prayers? I'm like, if if a demon came out by saying, God heal Joe in the name of Jesus, I would just pray that for everyone. Yes. And it would be quick and easy. But the reason we're there for two hours or an hour is not because we're inexperienced. It's not because... Um, if Isaiah does a, um, a deliverance for two hours, it doesn't mean he's unanointed. It means that that demon probably has many strongholds. And so I say to people, imagine you've got a hundred rooms in your soul and imagine when you invited Jesus and you invited him into your living room and he says, well, can I come into your sex life? And you said, no, yep. that's private. I don't want you in there. It's very dirty. It's very messy and you can't come in. Yep. What about pride? No, I, I'm not ready to repent of that yet. So you've still got doors closed to Jesus in your soul. Yeah. And um, deliverance is about letting the light of Jesus into every single room of your soul. And I like Alexander Pagani's book. Um, what's On it the called? Temple. The Secrets, the Secrets to, deliverance. to Deliverance. Yeah, he talks about the temple. Yeah, it talks about the temple and how the priests would sometimes bring um, like demonic objects and have like false gods literally right there in the temple. Mm -hmm. And they'd have to cleanse them and throw them out and things like that. Yeah, the biggest advice I can give people when it comes to, you know, as we kind of wrap it up a little bit is demons must be called out by name oftentimes. I saw this like documentary on YouTube years ago that was so fascinating of people that live in vacant homes. They live in abandoned houses. But the crazy part is this. The houses they live in look like normal neighborhoods. These are not like haunted houses in the corner. And I was so fascinated by these people. They were almost like a gypsy type of people where yeah. they were living in these abandoned houses and the, they were getting interviewed. And the people's like, how do you live? And they were like, well, when a, a family member dies or it's waiting to be sold or they literally just find empty houses and go squat and live in them. And the only way they'll leave is if somebody comes and makes them leave. Yeah. So one guy's like, I've been living in this house for like five months. And they're like, well, will you leave? He's like, well, no one's told me to leave. And I realized that is exactly how demons are. <laughs> and they live in these nice houses and they don't leave until somebody comes and, and demons are renters they don't own us but they do come and live inside of us Matthew 12 we are spiritual houses and we have to go as the with the power of the Holy Spirit as like the sheriff's department of God and yeah, be like you're being right. evicted from this house you've been hiding in this house you've been squatting you've been living here for so long but we're actually going to evict you today you have to go and sometimes they don't go right away. Sometimes, like, my, my uncle had these renters that wouldn't leave. They were destroying his house, and he kept coming, you guys need to leave. And they're like, all right, we'll leave, and they wouldn't leave. You guys need to leave. And so my uncle finally had to call the sheriff's department, and the sheriff's department had to come with a, a legal notice with authority saying, I come to you in the authority of the sheriff's department, and this notice says you have to leave, and then they finally were able to leave. So when we're doing deliverance, we're coming with the authority of Jesus Christ, the Word of God, being like, the Word of God says... You have to go. I know you've not left. They've tried to get you to go. Yeah. But like when you come in authority, you have a higher power giving you his mm -hmm. authority and they have to go. Like my uncle, they yeah. didn't have to leave, even though he was a, the landowner, but the sheriff's department made them go. So when I, when I teach on deliverance, like you have authority and you have power. The authority is the badge. The yeah. power is the gun. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to use the gun. I want to mm -hmm. be able to use authority. But if you don't listen, I'm going to have to use the gun on you. Yeah. So in deliverance, I'm going to come with the authority. If you don't yeah. listen... We're going to have to whoop you up the other way, you know, and get physical and get yep. yelling and shouting and figuring it out. But yeah, uh, demons are 100% like renters. They don't take care of the house. They don't care about the house. Mm -hmm. They destroy the house because it doesn't belong to them. Yep. But when Jesus comes, he's our owner. So he takes care of us. He loves us. He cares for us. Mm -hmm. And demons are liars. They just want to squat. Uh, give us a couple more days. 
the man at the tombs, the demon's like, why are you interfering with us? Give yeah. us more time. Yeah. Give us more time with the guy. And so we come with the deliverance really is in essence, the, the ministry of interference. We are coming tonight, those 3000 live watching right now to interfere with the plans of the enemy. There's people watching mm -hmm. this right now that don't realize we are about to interfere with them. Like mm -hmm. the demons are not realizing like, man, I've been doing my plan because every yeah. demon has a plan. Every demon has a strategy. Every demon has a headquarters. They're, they're strategizing how to ruin and destroy your life. And then we come and we're like, no, nope, we're going to come interfere with the plans and strategies of the enemy and the demons hate it. There's a reason why they scream out of you. They scream yeah. as they leave because they're not happy. Have you ever seen a police evict someone from their home? They, they, they bring them out screaming. So that's oftentimes, you know, in deliverance, I always think of it like, man, these people are squatting or these demons are squatting in people. And we are, we are houses. We're spiritual houses. Like Jesus said in Matthew 12, they call you their home. So mm -hmm. if you think of it that way, you're like, oh, I have the power to evict mm -hmm. them. I like the fact that you said that your friends told you schizophrenia is not a demon. Yeah. And then you said, no, it is because um, you're actually the most accurate deliverance teacher that I know. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I say to people, listen to Isaiah because it's 100% accurate, whereas I can't say that about everybody. Yeah. Because everybody has these little strange ideas that they've kind of brought into it. Um, and so um, schizophrenia, we, we've had people that been in and out of psych wards five times, tried to kill themselves six times, diagnosed with schizophrenia. All you've got to do is walk into a doctor and say, I'm hearing multiple voices and bam, you're, yep. you're tagged with schizophrenia. Yep. And you now have a label, a demonic label on you for the rest of your life. And you think there's something wrong with you. And we had a guy get delivered. He was um, native um, Canadian, as in native to the land. He got delivered and he went out and gave his testimony in 10 different churches across Canada. No more voices, no more schizophrenia went off his meds and the reason he was able to go off his meds is because he knows all the demons left. We don't get people to just stop meds by yes. faith. Yes. In the, the old Pentecostals, they used to go, well, go home and go off your meds and read your Bible more. Yep. And they'd come to the pastor and go, I'm still hearing voices. That's because you don't read your Bible enough. Go and read your Bible more because that's all they knew to say. Wow. Like they just, they're just very limited. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you run into it, you start realizing there's more than meets the eye and there's things that are hidden in plain sight, right? That's the name of the documentary. Is that right? There's things that are hidden, hidden, in, in, plain hidden sight. in plain sight. Well, Satan's kingdom is everywhere yeah. and it's hidden in plain sight. Yeah. But God's kingdom is everywhere and it's hidden in plain sight. So we're going to talk about how, you know, the kingdom of God, like the atheist doesn't even know the kingdom of God is literally the house next door because it's hidden in plain sight. And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So it's it's hidden. And another scripture says, um, you know, Jesus is talking about... Um, his kingdom and he's, oh no, this is one of the apostles, sorry. And he says, um, everything you can see and touch is temporary. Yeah. Everything that you cannot see that's real, that's out there is eternal. Yeah. You know, the, the angels, the demons, angels, heaven, hell. Yeah, the invisible and the invisible. Yeah. Everything that you can't see is eternal. So this whole movie is about um, everything you can't see that's actually real. And so the first one's mainly about deliverance, but then as we get deeper and deeper into it, we want to talk about how, hey, there's politicians that are actually demonized and Satan's pulling strings and causing these these laws to go through. Yep. And hey, there's rock stars and musicians, which you already talk about this a yep. lot, that they're demonized. And the Bible says the God of this age, meaning the devil, has blinded the minds of the whole world. Yes. It doesn't say they blinded the minds of 5% of the population. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. How does Satan physically blind the minds of the whole world? Yeah. The whole unbelieving world, especially. Yeah. He demonizes them. I mean, you look at, we're evangelists, but there's also demonic evangelists. There's demonic worship leaders. There's demonic apostles. There's demonic prophets. So these celebrities people follow and these um, rising stars on TikTok, so many of them are demonized and they're demonizing other people with their music, with their entertainment. I mean, look at entertainment. The first five letters are enter. So those are open doors for things to enter into us. And the devil's doing this on a mass scale yeah. with our kids. And one huge agenda that we see from specifically the alphabet community is towards children. It's yeah. always towards children. Why does it have to be children? It's always children. And the devil yeah. knows just like he tried killing Jesus as a baby, just like he tried killing Moses. Think about it. The two most prolific deliverers in all of scripture were who? Moses in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament. Moses brought the people out of bondage. Jesus brought the bondage out of the people. In the Old Testament, they lived in it. In the New Testament, it lived in it in, the, in people. So the two most prolific deliverers in all of the Bible, both of them, the devil tried killing them as babies. Both of them. The, the, Pharaoh said, we're going to kill all the young boys. Missed Moses. And then Herod said, we're going to kill all the young boys, missed Jesus. So anytime the devil really goes after the kids, we know God is raising up deliverers in that generation. So yeah. right now, God and prophetically is raising up deliverers in the young people. And so the devil's like, 
I got to kill these kids while they're infants, while they're in their adolescence, before they grow into maturity and they know who they truly are. And so the devil tries to get them while they're kids. And I tell people this, and I know this is a hard statement. You, you have to do everything you can to homeschool your kids. You have to do everything. And I'm not some you who like, oh, you're just some you who evangelical yeah. right winger. No, I am telling you the devil wants to eat your kids for lunch. Yeah. Absolutely wants to destroy yeah. them. He'll use their iPads. Yeah. He'll use their friends. He'll use teachers. He'll use the alphabet community. Yeah. He'll use transformers. And by that, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> He'll use anybody he can to destroy your kids. And so like our kids go to a small, small private school, probably 10 kids in the whole school. That's a friend of mine's church. And there's literally, they're being homeschooled pretty much at this private school. You got to get your kids in private school. You got to get them. I would make it you're like, well, I'm going to yeah. make less money. Yeah. Dude, I would live That's in a right. two-bedroom house over a five-bedroom if my kids were homeschooled or yeah. if my kids were in a private school because yeah. the public school system will destroy them. They're and teaching university. them. Oh, man, it is. Oh, yeah, and and call. Oh, don't yeah. even get me started on university. Like I, It's important. <laughs> man, at university, college, they they disciple your kids. The devil is discipling your kids, and, and there's these dark yeah. evangelists, these yeah. demonic teachers and professors that will... Yeah. I've watched more kids go off to a secular college and yeah. get their faith destroyed than anything else. Yeah. It's all the prince of the power of the air, yeah. the principalities, everything yeah. we see in the government, everything we see in society, not conspiracy, are ruled by invisible forces, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. So basically some of these universities, colleges, and schools have become Satan's training camps. Yes. And indoctrinated with atheism and then indoctrinated with all the other things that you've already mentioned. And, uh, and, and then, you know, you've got your family members coming out super de demonized and super leftist and, you yep. know, everything's changed. And it's like, well, you put them there. Yeah. And you know why the reason mom and dad put them there? Yep. So that they can make a lot of what? Yeah. This. And Jesus said, if you just build up your kingdom, it's, it's not going to last. Yeah. If you look at some of the most far crazy, when I say left, I just mean these crazy ideologies of there's no genders, there's 50 genders, all, the, all of them, they start looking like the thing that's controlling them. They start dyeing their hair crazy colors. They start piercing all crazy. They start, they dress crazy. Like, dude, go look at some of these fashion shows. You're like, these people are dressed like demons. Like literally they're so demonized. <laughs> the demons make, yeah, horns. The demons making them look like, and you, and you see this with like the body. People are body modifying. Have you seen that where they're getting horns put in? They're getting their tongue split. Metal they're getting here. Noah eyes full Skulls. black tattooed. So the, they're so demonized, the demon's making them physically look like the demon in them. And that's another sign of having a demon is being unclean. Mm -hmm. I talk to people all the time that are demonized. They're like, I hate showering. I hate brushing my teeth. I hate putting on deodorant. They're like, I don't know why. I just hate mm -hmm. showering. Yeah. Because the unclean, hello, yeah. unclean spirit makes you want to yeah. be unclean. So yeah. we could go all day on that, but I think we should probably pray some mass deliverance. Yeah, let's pray, pray some mass people. deliverance. Yeah. Um, maybe we could do a quick renunciation first. Yeah, um, lead us. So, you lead us. So Isaiah has a very similar way of doing this to me, but I'll just explain how I do, do it really quickly. So knowing the 50 most common demons that are out there, I usually get people to renounce the 50 most common Good. because I'm not worried about the rare and wonderful unicorn demons at this point. I'm like, let's deal with the really common ones that are kind of everywhere. So things like fear, rejection, lust, I want to rena yeah. renounce them with our words. So guys, you might just be watching this feeling like a spectator. This is the bit where you're actually part of it. So we need you guys to actually say these words out loud because it's not, we're not doing it for us. So you need to say these words out loud. If you think your family are near you and it's, it's inappropriate, guess what? Do it anyway, because you're only listening to an, you're, you're living for an audience of one or you're li li living for an audience of everyone. If you live for people's praises, you'll die by their criticism anyway. So don't live for the place as a man. Just look stupid. Your par parents and family already think you're crazy anyway. So just go the next step and just renounce demons right in front of them at the kitchen table. Why not? And they might manifest while you're doing it. So we're going to renounce um, orphan spirit and the rejection spirit. So just pray with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I reject the lie that I am an orphan and that I am not loved. I know that I am adopted into the kingdom of God by the spirit of adoption. I repent of all witchcraft, Ouija boards, astrology, crystal therapy, and just go ahead and add to that list. If there's something you've done, go and add to that list. I repent of yoga. Why am I repenting of that? Because it's Hinduism. It's not Christianity. It didn't come out of the Bible. It came out of Hinduism. So say, I repent of doing yoga, even if you don't know that it's demonic, repent anyway. I repent of having an abortion. I repent of driving my partner to the abortion clinic. So when we repent, guys, we put the blood of Jesus onto the open door and it closes the door so the demon can never come back. I repent of anger, rage, and murder. I repent of wanting revenge and I divorce the spirit of revenge. 
I repent of adulterous thoughts and actions. I repent of addictions to uh, pornography. I repent and renounce the lie that I am a failure or that I'm going to fail. I know that I'm not a failure. I've been called by Jesus Christ into his kingdom. I renounce the lie that I am going to hell and that I am lost and no one can help me. I believe the truth right now that I am a legitimate son and daughter of the Most High God. Even as I said that, Isaiah, I felt like there was someone out there that is convinced they're not saved Mm. and condemned. And there's a demon called condemnation. Yes. And that demon tells you God's always mad at you. He's angry at you. He's disappointed in you. And it tells you that you're going to go to hell because you're condemned. And what's the truth? Jesus Christ took all of the condemnation that's meant for us. He took it on the cross. So let's say that together. I renounce the lie that I am condemned. I believe the truth right now that Jesus Christ was um, condemned in my place. Look at the comments. Yep. I have a headache all of a sudden. And guys, when he's sudden. praying, just say, I renounce and say what he's saying. You don't have to follow word for word because you're like, he's going too fast. Just say, I renounce condemnation. I renounce yeah. lust. You don't have to word for word say yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. So he's, say this. he's I going re- at a good speed. I repent of lust. I repent of alcohol addiction. I repent of cigarette addiction. I renounce the lie that marijuana helps me in any way. Um, I renounce the lie that cigarettes calm me down and give me peace. I now believe the truth. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace and I have him. I repent of anxiety, stress, and fear. You need to do a lot of repentance, guys. Repentance, it's how you break the legal agreement between how the demon got invited in. They mainly come in through sin and lies and deception And so you need to repent of sin. So just keep repenting of everything. Like someone says, I'm crying. So the Holy Spirit's touching people right now. Everyone, we all need to repent of pride and apathy because we've all done it at some point. I repent of all pride and trust in myself. Yawning a lot. People are being delivered already. Shedding tears. People People are being delivered and we're not even praying yet. I renounce the spirit of perfectionism and the spirit of religion. My heart is beating fast. See, people are being delivered right now. I renounce the spirit of control and I repent of controlling my husband or wife. There's somebody on here, you have a spirit of control. You need to repent of controlling your family. And the lie that the devil told you is that you're somehow keeping them safe. Yep. I renounce the lie, say this, I renounce the lie that my control is keeping anybody safe. Control is an illusion and it's a spirit of control. Now say this, I divorce the spirit of control. I repent of all the Jezebel sins. Okay, let's go through the Jezebel sins. I repent of falsely accusing people. Jezebel had two people murdered in the Bible by falsely accusing them. Good. I repent of coveting other people's possessions. The people are yawning out demons. We haven't even barely started yet. I repent of trying to seduce anyone or control anyone to get my way. I repent of lying, stealing, and manipulating. I renounce and repent all laziness. Guys, if you think of another good one to add, say it in the comments. I renounce the lie that I should stay sick forever. Mm. I renounce the lie that I have X and Y and Z disease. Go ahead and name the diagnoses and say, I renounce the lie that I have this disease. Somebody on here, you've got Crohn's disease. Whoever that is, just type in the comments that just don't be ashamed. Just say that's me with Crohn's disease. You're about to get delivered and healed of Crohn's disease right now. We just had a lady in Canada just released from Crohn's disease. In my my experience, Crohn's disease is always a demon every Mm. single time. Mm. And that's why it's in the stomach because demons mainly come up from the stomach. Can you think of any renunciations to add to uh, that? You're, doing, you're hitting them all. I'm thinking here. You're hitting okay, them there's all. a demon called a lying spirit. Deaf and dumb spirit, someone said. Yep, deaf and dumb spirit. Yep. Okay, let's renounce the Obesity, lying spirit. gluttony. Yep, I repent of having addiction to food. Just say that out loud. Yep. I repent of every addiction and name some of the addictions. Spirit I renounce the pain. lie that I have eczema. I renounce the lie that I'm going to keep this. Insomnia, spirit of insomnia. Yep. Renounce it. I renounce the lie that I will always have insomnia. So go ahead and repent and renounce what it is that you think that you might have. I renounce the lie that I have adrenal fatigue. Spirit of death. Yep. I renounce. Constantly thinking of your own death. Okay, there's people on here and you've been having suicidal thoughts, right? What I want you to do is say, I repent of thinking about suicide or even trying to do it. Go ahead and say, I repent of it. It's a sin. Jesus said, if you've thought it, you may as well have done it. Like if you've thought it, it's like doing it. So just say, I repent of thinking it. I repent of even planning it or trying to do it. I renounce the spirit of death. And, and we've got to divorce a spirit spouse by telling it you don't want it anymore. You've got to Come make on. it your enemy. Did you know the Bible says many, many times, especially in the Old Testament, it says, I will deliver you from your enemies. Do you Come know on. how many times it says, I'll deliver you from your friends? Mm. Zero. 
God oh. can't deliver you from your friends. But if you'll make the sin your enemy, you'll make the demon your enemy, now you qualify to be delivered. Now you can have the children's bread. So if someone's saying laziness, so I, I repent of not say I repent of not preaching the gospel and not making disciples. It's a command. I didn't do it. So let's repent. I repent of not making disciples. I repent of the divorce I've had. I repent of making vows to my husband or wife that I broke and didn't keep. Because that's uh, things that we've made with our words. Say this, I renounce the lie that I'm going crazy, that I'm going insane. Now, this is the part where it's going to start getting a little bit wild because we're going to command the demons to say how many there are. Mm. And uh, feel free to jump in at any point. Yeah. So, guys, we want you to type, just to be very clear, in the comments, the number that comes into your mind when we, when we command the Spirit to surrender information. All right? And it could even be the Holy Spirit that gives you this word of knowledge. And it could even be the evil spirit. We don't really mind which right now at this point. Right now, we just want to get the number out, okay? So you're going to get a number, and you're going to put it in the chat. How many? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every demon under the sound of my voice and Isaiah Saldivar's voice to submit to the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And I command you to answer how many spirits are in each person. How many evil and unclean spirits are in Come each on. person? How many? How many? Give us a number. Notice I'm getting angrier. Crohn's disease, come out. Crohn's disease, demon, come out now in Jesus' name. Come out now in Jesus' name. Every evil and unclean spirit under the sound of my voice and Isaiah Saldivar's voice, submit to the name Go. of Jesus Christ Go. and come out now. Come out now, every devil. Come out now, every devil. You wanna, Yeah. You? We just say right now that these people are not your house, that you will no longer live in this home. We bind out. you and evict you tonight in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit of witchcraft, perversion, confusion, out. we bind you in Jesus' name. We command you up and out. Every spirit out. tonight will go into the abyss. They will never return. They will not pass on assignments. We sever your ties. Every ancestral spirit, every spirit that came in from the womb, from rejection, when your parent, when your mom was pregnant with you, when she was drinking and partying and doing drugs, those spirits that came from the womb, we cancel those sever, we cancel those ties, we sever the root now. We command every ancestral spirit to leave now in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit, go. The blood is against you, Satan. You have no power. You have no authority. The Lord rebukes you up and out now out. in Jesus' name. Let my people out. go in Jesus' name. We bind every spirit together as one. We bind you up with that chief demon. We call you out now. You must go. Your kingdom has been destroyed. Every stronghold, we shatter it. The Bible says the word of God is like a smashing hammer. We shatter the strongholds with God's word in Jesus' name. There is freedom right now. The blood is against you, Satan. You've lost this battle. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to begin to deliver, to begin to restore, to break right now every curse, every hex. We sever every generational curse at the root in Jesus' name. Out now. We sever every generational curse of adultery, of cheating, of yep. lying, of death. Teen pregnancy is a generational curse. I've dealt with many young people at 15 years old, 16. Everyone in the generational line got pregnant. We break the generational curse of teen pregnancy, of divorce, of addiction, of perversion, of molestation and rape. We break and sever the generational curses now in Jesus' name. We bind you up now. Whatever curse you might think is there yeah. or that runs in your family, I want to tell you that it ran in your family until it ran into you. Yep. It stops now. You are a bloodline breaker in Jesus' name. Amen. Every unclean spirit of fornication, every python spirit right now, spirit of python, come out. In Jesus' name. Out. Come out. In Jesus' name. Out of the mouth, into the abyss. Come right out of their mouth and go into the abyss. Some of you are like, why am I throwing up? Why am I coughing? Well, the demon's coming up through your esophagus. They're literally physically coming out of you. So don't be scared if it's coming up out of your throat, if you're coughing, if you're screaming, just let it out. Yep. And guys, as we're praying for you, this might sound counterintuitive. Do not pray in tongues. Do yep. not say Jesus, Jesus, because no. there's only one thing that can be coming out of your mouth. So we want the demon to come out. So just receive, let us pray for you yep. and let that demon out. Because if you're praying in tongues, the demon's yep. trying to come out of your mouth and you're praying in tongues. It's like there's already clean water coming out of the faucet. So right now, come out now. Every burping, foul spirit. People saying yawning constantly, burping, yep. burping. Um, out. People are feeling fire and heat on their body, tears. Like literally hundreds of people are being delivered right now. Thank you, Lord. And, Deliver our and kids. And we both know from experience, guys, we, we haven't even gotten 10% of the demons out on this live. We know because we do this all the time, right? Five days a week, we're casting demons out of people. Sometimes it's seven days a week. So there's more to go. Um, I'm going to name some of the demons and then Isaiah will name some of the demons. Death spirit, I know you're in people. Come out now. Yes. Suicide, I know you're in people. Come out now, you devil. 
Crohn's disease come out now. Cancer yep. out now, you spirit of cancer. Out now, generational cancer. Suicide out now. Witchcraft and Jezebel come out. Witchcraft and Jezebel come out. Do you guys look right in my eyes? The demons hate looking in our eyes. They see Jesus and they see fire, two things they don't want to see. Every spirit of Satan, Beelzebub, Lucifer, submit to the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and come out now. Come out now. Every devil, submit to the name of Jesus and come out. Come out of the stomach. Come out of the chest. Come out of the head. Fire of God, burn every demon spirit. Fire of God, burn every demon spirit. Yep, spirit of destruction, we cast you out now in Jesus' out. name. Every ancient spirit that's come through your bloodline, come out now in <clears throat> Jesus' name. Spirit of poverty that's keeping you behind, that's stealing and trying to destroy your out. finances, we command the spirit of poverty to come out now in Jesus' name. Right now, every spirit of infirmity, we command you right now, every spirit in your nervous system, every spirit in your vocal cord. We did deliverance on a worship leader who couldn't sing because the spirit demon literally said, I'm in his vocal cord. We command, the doctors didn't know what it was. We command the spirit out of your vocal cords in Jesus' name, out of your tendons, out of your ligaments. I command spirits to come out of bones right now. Every spirit hiding in your bones, hiding in your nerves, in your central nervous system, we command you to come up and out in Jesus' name. Every spirit that's causing you to have allergic reaction, every spirit of allergy, which is uh, common, we command you to come out now. Every spirit of phobia. Out. Some of you are afraid of things. Out. In the documentary coming out next week, we talk about this lady, deathly afraid Vomiting. of birds. <laughs> every phobia spirit, come out now. And some of you say, I, I pick out my nails and my mm -hmm. skin. That's from a spirit of anxiety. That spirit of anxiety has mm -hmm. to go in Jesus' name. Yeah. Every spirit of Tourette's out. that's giving you ticks, that's making you cuss, that's making Come you out. scream, out in Jesus' name. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Every spirit causing Tourette's, go in Jesus' name. You have no power. You have no strength. You have no legal right. In Jesus' out. name. Come up and out now in yeah. Jesus' name. Come up and out now in Jesus' name. The blood is against you. The blood, someone say, I want to click off this so bad it's making me want to click off. That's a demon. That's a demon. Do not click off. Come out now. Asthma, spirit of asthma, come out right now in Jesus' name. Satan, you are bound. You out. lost. They are not your home. It's time to go. Yep. I keep nodding my head. Well, that's manifesting. Someone You're manifesting it's a demon. It's very painful. You've got to ignore the pain yep. because it's very temporary. It's and, and it's not you crying. Yeah. Those of you that are crying, that's yeah. the spirit crying because it has to leave you. Yeah. Pornography and lust right now. I'm just going to say it. Spirit out. of homosexuality, out. come out now. Right spirit now. Spirit of homosexuality, out. come out now. In Jesus' name. Gender confusion. Whatever, yep, whatever spirit's telling you there's 50 genders, we cast you out now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The blood is against you. Asteroid, you must come go. out. Apollyon, go. come out. Go. Go. Viking Jezebel. spirits, come out. Go. Druid spirits, come out. Go in Jesus' name. Freemason demon, come out now. Hindu spirits, go in Free Jesus' Mason name. Demon, Every spirit out. that's coming through the new age, we command you to go out. now in Jesus' name. Spirit of anorexia, spirit of bulimia. Out. Last week, our guest had both those spirits, got delivered. Go, go. You have no power. You have no strength. The Lord rebukes you. The fire of God is against you right now. Out. OCD. Some of you are like, I have to check the lock seven times. I have to check the door 10 times. Yeah. That's a demonic spirit. Paranoia. Go. Yep. Spirit of OCD, paranoia, ADD, come ADHD. Come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of rape, come out now. Go. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go. Some of out you are asking now. about the map. Yes. If you need in person, IsaiahSellover.com slash deliverance. You can get 2,000 people around the world in person yep. to do deliverance on you. But right now, mass deliverance, for, for many yep. of you, this is the start. Yep. For many of you, this is you realizing you have a demon, yep. which is beautiful. You're like, I'm afraid I have a demon. No, it's beautiful. Now he's no longer camouflaged. Yep. Now you can go get delivered. For some of you, this is the start. For some of you, you're getting fully delivered. Yep. For others of you, this is just you knowing, okay, I could go get delivered mm -hmm. now. But many of you are being free. Maybe you have 10 demons and two of them come out tonight. Yep. But we're, we're putting pressure on Satan's yep. kingdom. And we're trying to go as deep as we can with the time that we've got. Someone yep. said, is chills deliverance, freezing cold deliverance? Yes. Guys, sudden heat, sudden cold, sudden pain. While we're rebuking demons, anything at all that's happening in your body is deliverance. Trust me. Dear if Lord. it's sudden pain in your knee, yes. If it's moving pain, yes. If it's sudden chill, sudden heat, yes. All of that. They, they, they. Every yeah. If, a min if five minutes ago you were fine, and now we yeah. start praying, and all yeah. of a sudden you feel, oh my chest is tight. Oh, something's in my throat, and mm -hmm. you feel like there's something balling up in your throat, or you feel like, oh now I'm nauseous. Why are you nauseous? We're just mm -hmm. praying. That's a demon reacting. It's a demon reacting to us praying. And you got to yeah. realize, many of you, those demons have never had anyone tell them to leave. Yeah. And now they're like, I've never even met a Christian like this. And now these guys yeah. are on here telling me to leave. 
So there is power when yep. we declare and when we command demons to leave you. And we call them out by name. Yep. And click share, guys, because demons are coming out right now by the hundreds, I'm telling yep. you. There's probably 3,200 people on right there's now. There's probably been already probably 500 people getting their, their Lord, shallow, shallow level of deliverance, not the full package, yep. but the beginning of your deliverance. And guys, it's like layers of an onion. You might get yes. delivered of three layers of an onion and you dig deeper and there's more layers. I got delivered like five separate times. Mom. My wife got delivered like six separate Come times. On. She never backslid. Someone says Ehlers Dandler syndrome. You know, the funny thing about that is my grandfather is named that. His name is Ehlers. Wow. It's my mother's maiden name. Wow. It's like he discovered it and his the other guys. So let's rebuke that demon. Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, you Ehlers Dandler syndrome, you come out now in the name of Jesus out now in the name of Jesus. You evil and unclean spirit of sickness and disease, come out now in the name of Yeshua I think HaMashiach. one we haven't called out is the spirit of unbelief, which tons doubt, of people have. Doubt yep, and they're unbelief. They're like, there's a voice telling me this is fake. There's a voice telling it's me unbiblical. this isn't real. Get off. <laughs> get off this. These guys are fake. These guys aren't. That voice is the spirit of unbelief. It's a demonic spirit it's that demonic. wants to keep you in bondage. Yep. And so we command that spirit to come out right now. Come out now. You've got to Jesus repent of it, name. guys. I you repent Lord. of having doubt and unbelief in the things of God. Because if you don't repent, you may not qualify to be delivered. So say, I repent of having doubt and unbelief. And I repent of rebellion. We didn't do that one. Yes. I repent of and rebelling against God and rege rebelling against my parents. Children's deliverance right now. We command every spirit out of your kids in Jesus' name. Every spirit out of your kids right now. Take control over that rebellious spirit. You need to do deliverance yep. on your kids right now. Yep. Put your hand on, and you're like, they're going to be traumatized. They'll forget about it. They'll forget they don't it. even remember what happened 40 mm -hmm. minutes ago. Put your hand on your kid and start <laughs> commanding all those spirits, perversion, rebellion, Ow. lying, anger. Why is my kid slamming his head in the wall? Yep. That's a spirit of destruction. Why is my kid constantly Off saying the craziest stuff? Spirit of perversion. And some of you dads out there watching porn, you don't realize you're opening up a portal in your house and those demons are coming through your, your screen and jumping on your kids. I'm telling you right yep. now, you're opening up a portal and those demons are entering into your children because you're opening up a spiritual portal. So you need to repent of that right now. You're like, well, I'm in my office late at night. I'm in my room. I'm in the shower. No one knows. I'm op You're opening up a door and those yeah. demons are jumping onto your wife, jumping yeah. onto your kids. So some of you, dad, you, yeah. you guys need to man up. Some of you out there are just wussies. I'm telling yeah. you, you need to man up be the priest of your home and say, if I could shout for a UFC fight or some boxer that means nothing, I could shout at these demons and command them to go. Some That's of you right. are shouting at the football game. This is your moment to be the dad, to swallow your pride, eat a, a slice of humble pie and say, you know what? I have not been the man of God. I've not been the priest. I'm gonna, I should be the one fighting for my kids. I've been fighting for everything else but my kids. Mm -hmm. You've been fighting for that overtime shift. It's time to fight for your kids tonight. Yep. It's time to do A lot of people are uh, yawning as they're repenting and as they're delivering. The reason is because they're fairly strong Christians already mm. and the demon's barely holding on. We call it a Velcro spirit because you could pull it straight off. It's, it's barely even attached. It's just a nickname. It's not a real demon name. So anyway, what we do is as you're repenting, you're breaking the agreement. Someone said, I felt buzzing in my hands. This could be a number of demons, but the main one is actually a spirit of masturbation. So mm -hmm. just go ahead and say, I repent of all masturbation. And as you repent, this one doesn't really manifest. It just comes out of your hands like this. So just as you manifest, just shake your hands and go, come out of my hands, come out of my arms in the name of Jesus. Right now, every spirit, evil and unclean spirits, under the sound of our voice, every seducing spirit and false doctrine spirit, every demon of religion and legalism come out now. Every e demon that entered through false teaching and false churches and false prophets and false teachers, submit to the name of Jesus Christ and come out now. Every spirit, the Bible says, if you listen to a different gospel other than the gospel that was preached, the original, you will receive a different spirit, yep. small, to the spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, that you have already received. So false teaching brings in false spirits. That's why we have whole churches where everyone has a spirit of judgment, legalism, and religion because that's been preached from the pulpit and they all received a different spirit. The Holy Spirit can't go and operate through a message that's false, guys, but an evil spirit can. Come on. So you get these mega churches preaching a mega false message and the Holy Spirit's like, I, I can't honor that word. Come on. I can't even enter in there. And then the demon goes, I can enter and I can use that message. And the demons come straight in. And the whole church has a spirit of religion. Yep. The whole church has a spirit of legalism. Yep. And you didn't know, you're just believing what, you, what you're being taught. And you got a false teacher as a pastor. In the name of Jesus, every demon that came in through false Go. teaching and Go. false pastors out, out in now name. in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. 
Go. Out and out. PTSD. Guys, that Schizophrenia. is... Schizophrenia. PTSD out. is spiritual. You ha that is trauma that the demon came in through. When you had a trauma, a spirit came in because spirits often come not by what you did, but what's been done to you. And when you have a traumatic situation, that spirit of trauma comes, we call it PTSD. I have mm -hmm. this stress disorder from some traumatic experience. That was oftentimes an unclean spirit of trauma that came in through that event. Yep. So right now, spirit of PTSD, spirit of trauma, right now, whatever that was that you went through, we <laughs> command that spirit to go. We close the door to trauma. Now, you don't need to go back. Some pastors are like, we're going to go back to your... No, no, we're not. We don't need to go back no. to the trauma. We're going forward. We're looking at the cross, and we're commanding the spirit of trauma up and out. We're not no. asking you. We're telling you, out of the mouth, yeah. into the abyss now, in Jesus' name. You have no power. Incubus and succubus, come out now in the name of Jesus. Incubus and succubus, come out. Someone said, why did my ears pop? Because a demon left your head and come came on. out your ears. What demons live in the head? Demons like confusion. We call come them on. mental spirits because they're in Super the head. Confusion. Submit in the name of Jesus and come out of people's heads now. Spirit of confusion and every, I'm getting Hindu spirits. There's people here, your ancestors yes. were um, Hindus. Okay, say, I reject and renounce every Hindu spirit. Every Hindu spirit, Shiva, come out now in the name of Jesus. Go. Ganesh, come out now. In the, every spirit that came in through rape and sexual abuse, Come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Spirit of timidity that came in through abuse. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out now, every devil. Submit and come out right now in Jesus' name. Lots of people burping. Guys, remember, the demons are just coming out. Oftentimes, they could come out through your ears. They can come off the top of your head, out of your hands. Oftentimes, they come out of the mouth. Acts chapter 8, they were screaming as demons left them. They were coming out of the mouth. So if you're burping up or you're throwing up or you're coughing, there's nothing spiritual about throwing up other than it's your body reacting to something coming up out of your throat. So people are like, what is the throw up? The throw up has no special power in it. It's just your body's reaction to a spirit coming up through your esophagus. Yeah. And your body's response is to gag and to throw up. Some yeah. of you may burp. Some of you may yawn. A yawning could be a demon coming out as well. Yeah. But remember, these are spirits, which is literally breath, literally air that are coming up through. So let it happen in Jesus' name. And guys, some of you, again, you need to go on the deliverance map and you need to schedule a deliverance. We have a map of 2,000 people all over the world that are willing to do deliverance mm -hmm. on you. So go to my website, isaiasaldivar.com slash deliverance or Google the deliverance map. Mm -hmm. We make no money. We spend money to do this. We don't make any money from it. Go get delivered. Connect with somebody because some mm -hmm. of you, this is the start. There's 3,200 of you on here. There's many of you that still need more deliverance. But also, if you're in a room, listen, if you're in a room right now with your loved one and they're manifesting... This is your shot. Yeah. This is your moment. You've already watched our teachings. We've given you the seven steps. We taught enough. We honestly taught enough tonight for you to just do deliverance. It's not that hard. <laughs> you just commanded to come out. And guess what? You got the Holy Ghost. You got the best teacher there ever was. You, you maybe don't have all the books, but you have the Holy Spirit. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will teach you tonight. So do the deliverance tonight. Don't be scared. Don't be like, oh, well, what if the person crawls up the wall? Let them crawl mm -hmm. up. They'll come back down. Don't be scared if they start levitating. It's You need to do, do it. This is going to make God come yep. alive to you, and uh, it'll make yep. your faith and, extremely real. And don't real. show fear to the demons, and don't show uncertainty. Even though you feel maybe uncertain, just go out and pretend you're an expert. I always say faith it until you make it. Yes. Step out, give it a go, and you get, guess what? God's going to deliver people. By the way, when you're already yawning, it's actually anyone can cast demons out once the person's already yawning. Mm. Because it means the demons are already leaving. So as soon as you see the manifestation, you know they're leaving. So people are saying neck pain suddenly appeared. So that's a demon literally on your neck coming coming off. And this, the crying one, the crying one's a spirit. Laughing Sadness. in a mocking way. Out. That's 100% a demon. Mocking spirit. N out. The biggest manifestation when you start deliverance is a mocking laugh. They will laugh and mock you. Yep. What should I do? Either go through self-deliverance, replay this, or go get deliverance. Yep. There's many things you can do, but the worst thing you can do is be like, this is nothing, this isn't real, nothing's happening. I'm telling you right now, God is exposing what is done in the darkness. Yep. God will bring it to the light right now. Yep. Now, just Lord. how we did the number trick, guys, and and this is what one thing I wanted to bring in tonight because I've been doing this all around the world for 15 years. And so when I say I command you to answer me, what I find is I get an accurate number. We can also do this to get the names of the spirits. So let's try that. We're going to get the names of whatever strong man, which is the highest ranking spirit you have left. So listen and type it into the chat what name you get. I take authority over every evil and unclean spirit and I command them to submit. What is the name of the strong man in each person? I command every demon to submit to the name of Jesus Christ. What is the name of the strong man in each person? Give up the name of the strong man. Show them the name and put it in the comments, guys. What is the name of the spirit in charge? Okay, Python, diabetes, rebellion, autism, yawning, joker, lying, poverty, anger. So sometimes they'll give you the real name, Molech. 
Harvard if you've got Moon. Molech, repent of human sacrifice and abortion. If you've got Python, repent of um, any kind of divination. Guys, the Greek word Python in Go English on. is divination. If you get alcohol, go and repent of that. What Blast is the name rejection. of the strong man? What is the name of the strong man? Someone's got Baal. Someone's like Gluttony. Hearing, no. Yes. We say yes. You will come out in Jesus' name. Who else is in there? You Lord, what other demons are in each Ishtar, person? Go gossip. Ishtar, if you Jesus get gossip, name. guys, say, I repent of all gossip and I divorce the spirit of gossip. Lilith, Lilith, come out now, you demon. Lilith, come out. Lust and abuse, come out. Beelzebub, come out in the name of Jesus. Death and pride, come out. Bozy, Lucifer, come out in the name of Jesus. Some of these might sound weird, out. but they're, they're, Don Dickerman's done 100,000 names. He said Abalon. He's got it almost right. It's it's um, like Abaddon. Mm. And there's one that's like Apollyon. Yep. Come out now, you Belial. devils. Come out now. Some of the demons might be names of people that have traumatized you or molested you or raped you because the demon takes on that personality. So oftentimes it's a name of a family member. Like, how could the demon be the name of my family? Because it's a personality. Literally, demons' names yep. are their personalities. Isolation. That's a demon. Yep. So, so, Siphon. I, so if you've got isolation, say, I repent of isolating Domination. myself from the body of Christ because that's what that demon does. It tells you to go and isolate yourself. Isolation, come out now in Jesus' name. Masturbation, come out now. Slothful spirit, come out now. Trauma, come out. Trauma is the name of a demon, guys. Trauma, come out. It's every every negative emotion has a demon name behind it. Everyone. Hatred, is that a negative emotion? Yes. Does it have a demon called hatred? Yes. Spirit of hate. Come out, Lord. spirit of hatred. Thank you, Lord. Isolation, go in Jesus' Cough name. Cough it out, devil. Infertility. We didn't hit that one. Right. Every spirit on the womb, every curse on the womb, and every spirit of infertility, go in Jesus' name. Every spirit on your womb, go. Every contract, every plan to keep you barren, which is all throughout the Bible. We've seen women delivered, the demon come out of their womb, and they come have out. kids now. Come out now. Every spirit of infertility, you must go. On male or female, whatever's keeping you infertile, we command you to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out. Anemia. We command the spirit of anemia to go right now. Come out now. Hindu spirits from my parents. We command all those spirits to go. Spirit of sabotage. Out. Go now. Fatherlessness, that's a, that's the spirit of abandonment. We command out. that spirit of abandonment to go. Out. Go in Jesus' name. Orphan spirit, come out. Orphan go. spirit, come out. Acid reflux spirits, come out. You can just name the condition, guys. You can say diabetes, come out. Spirit causing heart condition, come out. You can just name the, the sickness. Laziness and division, come out. Death, come out. Go. D divorce in come Jesus out. Name. Pride come out. Depression come out. Literally hundreds of people are being delivered right Mormon now. Mormon spirit. Every spirit tied to the Mormon. Out well, now. Mormonism is a cult. Cult so spirit. command that cult spirit to go now in Jesus' name. Every cult spirit, every false religion, which Mormonism would be a false religion, out. we command the spirit of false religion to go now. Come out. The fogginess to go now. MS. Spirit Thank causing MS. Come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Sinusitis come out. Sinusitis come out now. Father, we just pray right now, Lord, that you fill every person that's been delivered with the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, for every room that's been emptied out, fill them with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Right now, you said in your word, if evil parents give good gifts, how much more does the Holy Spirit, the Heavenly Father, want to give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So, Father, right now, for those that have been delivered, I want to make sure we close it by saying, Lord, fill them with the Holy Spirit. Fill them, Lord. Fill them. Anoint them right now. Every empty area. Some of you feel empty now. You're lighter. I pray every empty room would be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. Be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Be anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit would stir in you. For so long, those demons have been stopping you from going after God. And right now, I pray that you would run. I pray you'd be addicted to God's word. I pray a holy addiction to prayer, to the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. Be filled right now. Be filled right now. I pray be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Be filled in the name of Jesus. Rivers of living water, be filled right now. Be filled. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire right now. In Jesus' name, be filled. Be filled. Be filled in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. What an amazing broadcast, guys, tonight. Hidden in plain sight. When is it coming out? We don't have a date yet, 
but we'll post about it when it's coming out. They're still yeah. working on the documentary. Some of the clips, obviously not the whole stream, some of the clips will take small pieces from tonight. We thought you guys could get the raw interview and then they'll clip whatever pieces they feel necessary to use. Um, we did like hours of filming for the movie coming out next week and only several minutes are in the movie. So we're not, of course, these are just going to be small clips of whatever content is needed, but be looking to that. I also want to tell you guys, so into this broadcast, we've been live two hours and 15 minutes. We don't believe in, oh, if you give, you'll get delivered. We don't do none of that garbage. If you are blessed by what we brought tonight, by the interview, by the content, so into the broadcast, they're not going to want me to, but regardless, I'm sending them home with finances. I want to bless them. They're traveling. They're driving. They're literally driving hours to do deliverances. They're meeting with people. So I want to sow into their ministry, into what they're doing. So please, this is not, we're not beggars. We're believers. We don't twist arms here. This is all free. Everything we do is free. All of our content is free. So if you're going to cry about, oh, they're asking to give, go cry somewhere else. We're not afraid to ask people to give. All of this has been free. You've paid for none of this. But if you're blessed by it and you're able to, then sow into what God is doing. Now, I think people that say you have to give to get delivered, I think that's garbage. I don't think ever you need no. to. Jesus said, freely you've been given, freely you give. So you are not giving for your deliverance. You are not <laughs> giving your for a prophetic word or some garbage televangelist saying, give nine ninety nine. <laughs> you're sowing because you believe in what God is doing and you want to get this message out to more people. That's the yep. bottom line. Yep. We reached 200 million people last year or 200 million views. We want to reach 400 million this year in Jesus' name. So, yeah. so into that, where could they follow you guys and find more of your stuff? Yeah, so my wife's going to post up our Facebook, which is Matthew, Alicia, Morton. So Matthew, We'll post that in the description too. Yep, and then we can even post that short clip that we made. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. A, so we had made. So we can post that clip, and then can you go ahead and post our TikTok? Yep. We'll post, post all that in the and, and I'm going to get Instagram. all the links tonight guys and I'm going to put every link in the YouTube description. We're going to play yeah. a small teaser trailer from the from the movie coming out and then there'll be of course more trailers added all that but this is an early trailer here. We're going to queue this up um, and then we're going to play the trailer here in just a second. You want to queue that up Nico? The movie trailer? Yeah, it's right here on um, you'll see it on OBS. All right. Yep. Here we go. Let's see. If you've got a spirit of witchcraft, control, anger, lust, perversion, Jezebel, rage, murder, and suicide, you're not going to be manifesting the perfect love of Jesus Christ because you've got demonic evil influences that are preventing you from being like Jesus. <laughs> and it's coming at you and it's coming at you. It's not God's will for you to live in nightmares, guys. If someone comes up to them with an evil spirit or problems or maybe even a spirit of suicide, we want that person to be able to deliver them from the spirit of suicide. So when they leave church, leave the building, they no longer have suicidal thoughts. I want to make people uncomfortable now. Let's make them uncomfortable in their sin. Let's make them, let's make their demons uncomfortable. That because we are always looking for an excuse to not go to somebody. So I'm an encourager of Man, go find somebody and get, let somebody lay hands on yeah. you and get the devil cast out. And when you make sin your enemy, you actually make demonic spirits your enemy. And then you are able to cast them out. There it is, guys. Hidden in plain sight coming to who knows which lucky social media live stream platform. Netflix. Are you listening? Which one's lucky enough to get this yeah. documentary? Yeah. It'll get to somebody and it'll get out there and we'll post it. We'll talk about it. We'll launch it. Maybe we can get it after the contract's up yeah. on the YouTube channel or something. But we're going to get out to as many people as possible. We have on Monday, guys, you need to listen right now, 2,000 theaters. We have our Come Out in Jesus Name movie this Monday. We're meeting up at 7 p.m. It's yeah. 7 p.m. all over the country. And also, they're adding days. So March 13th, yeah. this Monday. You're like, wait, you have a movie coming out? Yes. ComeOutInJesusName.com. This is a documentary. This is not a reenactment. A documentary. It is appropriate for kids, okay? I would, I don't know. It depends on how mature your kids are. Some of you have 18-year-olds that act like they're 10. But if they're, I would say like 10, 11, 12 and up is appropriate, but use your own discretion. But that will be this Monday in theaters. Come out in JesusName.com. And then make sure you guys are giving. So monthly, so one time, partner. And then in the comments, let us know what you thought about the stream. I have to wait here till you guys keep giving and processing all those donations. We appreciate you guys giving. I'm going to be sewing in. I'll put it this way. I'm going to give them more than comes in. So help me sow into them and bless them um, because I want to partner with them and, and sow a seed into them. And I, I practice what I preach. I'm not going to tell you guys to sow and give, and I'm not going to sow and give. I'm going to be sowing and giving as well. You guys have a YouTube channel? Yes. Not yet? Yes. yes. What's it called? Okay. At Matthew. Oh, we're going to post it yeah, here in the yeah. chat. Put There's in the, the chat, Facebook. At Matthew Alicia Morton. 
Yeah, we got TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Right after this broadcast, all of their links will be in the description. I should have had those up before, but we'll make sure all the links are there. Matthew and Alicia Morton. It's Alicia, right? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was Alicia, but yeah. it's Alicia. Make sure you guys get that on the YouTube. Subscribe. If you're listening on audio, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow along. And yes, yeah, and someone just, said Jesus is alive. Yes. Amen. And just for those that are curious, we will be doing revival and deliverance meetings across Australia for the next one year. Come on, Australia. My wife's Canadian. I didn't get her a proper visa. We just got her a one-year visa. There you go. So we're going to do a year in Australia. So if you're from Australia, we're going to set some fires, Holy Ghost fires, and cast some demons out of some people. And I'm going to get the pastors to line up first and then do the churches. You yeah. Know? And then um, after we do deliverance revivals in Australia, especially Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, and Brisbane, and then a little bit in Sydney and Melbourne, uh, then we're doing Canada for six months, especially the Vancouver area and through there. And then after that, we go across USA and then down to Latin America. So stay in touch, guys, because we're going to be posting like, who wants to come to Brazil and be part of a crusade with Revival and Deliverance? Awesome. I'll be calling up Isaiah and going, can you get a week off? So um, if they let me, man, if you guys don't stop, maybe one day just sh stop showing up to the streams <laughs> and I'll be like, all right, I got to go start Time traveling go. again. Well, they keep showing we, up. we can do it from a hotel room on a laptop and yeah, say, it's yeah. not as professional today, guys. I'm yeah. in Brazil doing a crusade. A uh, deliverance map. Where yeah. do we get the people to pray for us? IsaiahSalver.com slash deliverance. And you can find a map, find someone in your area and contact them on the map in your area. And then for those of you asking, Zell is Isaiah Luke Saldivar at yahoo.com. And our PayPal is on the description and in the comments. Yeah. But I apologize. We don't have a QR code. We should have had one up ready. Uh, we have one, but I don't know why it's not on screen. We haven't, we need to get it on here, but next Time we will. And then next Tuesday in the studio, Lonnie Frisbee's best friend who took care of him as he was dying will be right here sitting next to me. We're going to do a video call and he's like, hey, I'll drive down and come yeah. in person. So we're going to be in person. Every question you guys have about the Jesus revolution or the Jesus movement will be answered next week. And then the week after we have a guest, the week after we have TJ down. So we're putting a lot of work in the studio. It is way more work getting guests in than just, hey, I'm going to Zoom you. And we did 130 yeah. episodes over Zoom. And now it's like, it's a lot more work, but it's it's, it's working out good. So I'm glad you guys enjoy it. Yeah. And I've heard him speak and he's a good speaker and oh, he's, awesome. he's super humble and very accurate. Awesome. So he'll just tell you the yet. whole truth. And, uh, it's, it's, it's very like, you just, you can't stop listening to him. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to have him. All right. If you guys have any burning questions, now's your time. Yeah, we are burning staring questions. at the chat. If you're in Australia or New Zealand, contact me because we will, we will be planning revival meetings across Australia, and New Zealand in the next one year and then Canada, USA, and then Latin America. And uh, at some point, Europe, because I know there's some people here in um, the UK, we just did Scandinavia recently. So um, stay in touch, guys. Um, I travel a lot. Uh, we, since we got married, we've been doing revival meetings in about 12 different countries. So we've actually been living out of our suitcases from hotel to hotel pretty, much, pretty much since we got married. Talk about laying your life down. And... Um, <laughs> partner guys partner partner have you ever heard of tim horton's coffee yeah, jason tim horton's yes. is, is um awesome Timmy's, right is timmy's is awesome but uh i can't say that's my favorite coffee I, I, australians are known for being coffee snobs oh, so we have very high standards so we like um or get like organic beans that are like freshly roasted recently that are like single origin from like <laughs> oh, man. Kenya. And, and you want to sell me and you want to sell me like them, Lord. what we call drip coffee. Like it's so funny because uh, that we he inspects <laughs> the coffee bean under a magnifying glass well, not before that. he uses but, it. Um, Aussies go to a cafe, they expect a real decent latte, and it's like when when it's when it's like a diner and it's this filtered coffee, they won't even touch it. They're like, oh, I'm not touching that. It's dirty dishwater. But I found out it's a lot lower fat because you're drinking 90% water. Yes. So you, you know, I used to work at Starbucks for three years. You know what I'm talking down. about? Starbucks is like the McDonald's of coffee. Yeah. It costs $9 but for But at least they have decaf. Water. We drink decaf. So sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you for sure need deliverance. I know. You drink coffee and don't even get the caffeine. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Seven weeks of coffee. It's good. Ontario, uh, Canada. Yes, at some point, Courtney will come to Ontario. Um, Alicia's got, my wife's got family there, so we'll, we'll come. Stay I used in to touch. go to Canada all the time. I haven't been since the whole I was pandemic, tell you, but I, was I went a bunch this. of times to Abbotsford. I have stories about that, bro. Alicia's from Abbotsford. Oh, really? And we've met people that have been in your meetings. Oh, really? And I used to go to Abbotsford all the time, four, yeah. four times a year, three times yeah. a year. And as you know, some, Vancouver, some people get delivered in your meetings, but you don't have time to do the deep deliverance with everyone. Yeah, yeah. One girl that had been in there just as a teenager... She got deep deliverance from lots of spirits and she'd remembered being in your meetings wow. as a teenager. Wow. 
Yeah. That was back so, in the day. I've so been going to I'm literally, since 2013. I'm literally doing your stomping grounds because we did about a year and a half of revival meetings all around Abbotsford. Wow. Yeah. Transform Central is where we're at. Yeah. Yep, transform there some of them are in the chat here appreciate yep. you guys yeah we know that abbotsford in the house brayden yeah brayden's in the house brayden yeah. hall do you know brayden i know brayden oh brayden's in the yeah. chat he just yeah. appears we know, brayden pastor, hall appears. we know pastor mike we've met him yeah? a, few, a few times okay i didn't know that small yeah. world i love pastor mike i love transform you guys are awesome brayden in the house just pops up on facebook he says Isaiah, one question yes brayden you got my undivided attention brother um, no, you don't talk faster than me. I still talk faster than you, Brayden. Okay, Tom sure you know. Tom Morton is sure that we're related I've, because the name's Scottish. Yes, it is Scottish. My ancestors were Scottish. So Tom Morton, we're definitely related. You're probably my distant cousin. So again, again, hit me up on Facebook. Like I would love it if every single person on here added me on, on Facebook especially um, because, guys, we want to do revival meetings around the world with healing and deliverance. Um we do it online, but we do way more physical, in-person type meetings. So stay in touch, and then we can connect. Braden said, hey, "Have you ever felt to not do deliverance on somebody?" Yes, absolutely. I've done. The, I've <laughs> yes. had times where they're manifesting. I'm like, "You're not ready to be delivered. You're going to go right back to that lifestyle." Uh, so yes, unbelievers. I personally, most of the time, if there's a chance for me to give them a gospel presentation, I use deliverance as the evangelism tool to bring them the gospel. So yes, I will do and work with an unbeliever, and we'll present them the, present them the gospel first before we do the deliverance. But if they're a believer and I'm like, they're not ready, they're going to go back. They haven't been. Yeah. I can tell they're not walking that narrow road. I just won't do the deliverance. I'm yeah. like, it's going to be worse for you. Yeah, It's going to come back. I, I want to kind of like give a slightly different angle on that. Yeah. So we we came across someone who was like, hi, I'm a witch. And they were, they were like not really interested in becoming a Christian. Yeah. And they were full of demons. And um, we were down in Costa Rica and we said, hey, we do deliverance. We help people get set free from evil spirits. Do you want to get delivered tonight? And it was her birthday. And she goes, yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, I got a full blown witch. Yeah. See, I, I'd probably do in that situation. So I just, why I did it is because I thought the moment she starts manifesting yes. demons, she's going to be way more open to receiving Christ. Yes. Okay. You've got things in you that are dark. Why don't we invite the light in? Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Yeah. So um, I've never had someone manifest demons and then say, no, I don't want Jesus. Yeah. So um, we just started taking authority, started commanding the demons to come out. And as you can expect, you can't have her. She's ours. Yeah. And then, you know, when we came back to her, we said, did you hear what they said? And she's like, yeah, I heard what they said. And there was still a bit of deception and delusion. She's like, how do I know they're evil spirits? Maybe they're good spirits. And then she was like, all right, you can cast this one out, but not Ra because I like Ra. And you can cast this one out, but not this one. So it did get a little weird because she didn't have any um, Christian framework and biblical framework. So she had these really weird ideas and, and deceptions. But over, like, we, we literally said, come and live with us in our Airbnb for two weeks, which is kind of messy. And uh, I won't go into some of the stuff, but it was, it was good enough. No it joke. was okay. You guys are doing the work. Yeah, I mean, we were like, let's just let her live with us for two or three weeks. And so we brought her in. And long story short, um, she got delivered and saved and baptized. And um, yeah, we have had non-Christians before where we lead them into deliverance, but we only lead them into it like a little way. And, yeah. If they and, say like, I'm yeah. not going to serve God. I, I just want yeah. freedom, but I don't yeah. want to serve him. You probably no. wouldn't do it. Right. No. Like if they're like, yeah, no. me too. But if they're willing, then yes, absolutely. Can you drag those donations over? Just try. I know yeah. the screen's messed up. Maybe but, you um, can't. You also have to keep in mind that their salvation is a million times more important than them being harassed by yes. demons. Yes. When you see the salvation as being a million times more important than, than whether they're five demons come or go, or they're 20 demons, then you realize, hey, um, whether they get saved or not is actually the big deal because Jesus said, you guys should go out and rejoice. And I'm not sure if you teach this, Isaiah, but Jesus said to his 72 disciples, you should go and rejoice that every single one of you, your name is written in the book of life. Mm. He, he didn't say like, oh, it might be scrubbed. You guys are going to get scrubbed. Like you might make it to heaven if you work a little harder. He literally looked them in the eye and told them, you're all going to heaven and you're all saved. Wow. And this is the interesting point. He said it to the people that were healing and delivering and preaching the gospel, right? I like that. But when did he say it to the people that were sitting on their butts in the crowd of 5,000? Never. Never. You they all left him when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. <laughs> yep. So my point is, Jesus didn't assure the crowd of believers and followers that they were all going to heaven because um, Jesus never asked you to become a believer one time in the whole Bible. Mm. He only says, become my disciple. I want all of you or nothing. Good. So uh, he's, he, he, he guarantees the disciples. He's like, you guys are out there doing my will. Your names are written in the book of life. Good. But he, he doesn't say that to lukewarm believers that sit on a pew. Preach. I love it. Brian, uh, Brianna Wilson says, thank you, brothers in Christ. God bless you. Thank you, Brianna, for the donation. Anita Diane, so thanks for helping crush Christian brothers and sisters. And then I see where you need help and we will pray for you, but we will not read out your things because I don't like reading out people's prayer requests because uh, some of them, 
people don't want that. Rochelle in Israel, thank you. Irene says, thank you, Jesus. I was manifesting. Thank you, Jesus, for freedom. Prayers to continue freedom for my family in Jesus' name. Janae said, thank you for tonight. The live was truly a blessing as usual. Thank you, and God bless you, Isaiah and Matthew. Thank you, Janae. Anonymous said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for tonight. Renouncing pride and doing it in my own strength hit different. That's one way to put it. Also <laughs> hyped to see the documentary and come out, uh, come out in Jesus' name. Thank you. You're way cooler than me, Anonymous, using all these cool words. <laughs> Devin and Undra. Thank you, Anonymous. Thank you, Devin and Undra. Said, thank you for this live. I love your extreme enthusiasm for Christ. That's a good way to put it. Y'all are coming out with some good words here. <laughs> Angie, thank you. And Louise Sellerzano. So lift me up in prayer, brother. I got you, Louise. Thank you. Everyone Jesus, giving on the website, Louise, giving on PayPal, you. giving on Venmo, yes. all that. I won't read the Venmo right now, but I'll read it right after the stream. So usually we read all of them on my other thing, but in studio, yeah. we're going to work on the donation stuff. We're kind of like just all over the place on the studio. All right, guys, I think we're going to call it there. I'll make sure all their stuff are linked. I'll try, I'm will i going to make sure we get them all the footage for the movie. And uh, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. What a great time. Almost two, what, two and a half hours? This is the time I usually stream. I go long. Sometimes guests don't want to come on because like, are we going to go two hours? I'll do four. But you know, like, oh, you, there if you, you go. If, if you, you do most of the talking. You want to go four? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we'll go to the next topic. Let's talk about prophecy. No, we love you guys. Dude, we I would appreciate love to you talk guys. about prophecy with you. I love it. Um, Two and a half hours. Again, guys, you're not being charged. It's free 99 if you could afford it. Then so if not, there's no no bad feelings, no nothing. You stay and enjoy all the free content. Just only thing you we don't want you to do is whine about it. Just don't whine about us <laughs> asking because uh, you get free content regardless. So we appreciate you guys. Okay. Yep. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Let's and see if I can work this ending guys. screen. There we go. Is our mic still on? People yeah, are saying, let's go into prophecy. Love prophecy. <laughs> They'll stay up all night, man. They're still 2,500. They'll still be on the ending screen. Really? Ending screen, yeah. Love you guys. God bless you. Said, thank you, man of God. Someone said, keep going, Matthew. I'll go get a drink of water and go get some food. I have not ate yet today. And so okay. you guys can go ahead and keep My friend thing. Nick's online. He goes, me and Matt have gone for four hours. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm glad, man, because some people after like and an Megan? hour, they're like, uh, well, can we close it now? I'm glad you can go there's, on. There's one girl on there. You do Matt. deliverance. That's why you're able to go along. Yeah, we, um, it's, it's interesting. We get very exhausted doing deliverance along late nights. Awesome. Someone said, do you work for Pure Flix? No, you don't, right? No, no, we don't work for Pure We had someone reach out to us from Pure Flix recently, a different person. But yep. yeah, I'm interested. If, if someone's that. passionate about filmmaking and editing video and they want, they want work, let us know. Yeah, guys, if you're good at editing making shorts. I'll go into my whole nerd talk here, but tech stuff, hit them up because they, they definitely need help there to be able to, um, I don't want to kidnap, I don't want to kidnap Isaiah Saldivar's brother. Yeah, yeah, he's not, you can't anyways, <laughs> he'll fight you off. He's not for sale. People are like, who's the guy that makes your stuff? I'm like, don't worry about it. He's not available. His laugh stays here. You cannot take his laugh. Dude, he's my number one fan. Dude, now no one's laughing. Like, inside who's that guy that's always laughing? <laughs> He's like a celebrity, his laugh. We're going to get him a camera soon. One but. day we'll put him on and be like, this is the guy that's been laughing for 30 yeah, years. Yeah. But but one day we'll be like 95 and me and Isaiah will still be casting out demons and he'll still be laughing yeah, in the corner. Yeah. We'll be drinking coffee going, you listen to me, you devils. You'll come out right now and he'll still be laughing. <laughs> David Schluter, thank you, bro. He said the studio's still blowing me away. So sick. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and money into it. For real, though. We appreciate it, man. Love you. All right, guys. See ya. God bless. bless Good night. These are not devil horns. That's a